99.9% of the time. So, awesome. yeah, you usually won't see me unless I'm there with the kids dropping off some lunch or something. Right I bopped in today and Udell was working. Yeah. 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 And I was like, John, he's like, no, Hey Joey, <laughs> you know me. I didn't know where anybody was. So yeah, my he, apologies. To no, no worries. Uh, Udell works up at Kindred and then volunteers basically became friends with us and was like, I just want to help you guys out. Oh, nice. So he helps us out one day a week. It's like, Hey, that's great. man. Whatever you could do to have that community to support you, right? Like, yeah. Hey, <laughs> That's I mean, kind of what I don't want to say what this uh, has evolved into, but local community business owners, entrepreneurs yeah. and stuff, and then we could all help each other out and shit. I love it. Yeah. I saw like the amount of people even close to here that you had on the show so far. So that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Cool, man. All right. Good to go. Good to go. Yeah. Cool. Good to go. Joey C in the place to be. I got a big boom box and a new CD coming at you live from the GFY studios with the AO show, authentic only. Here today with my man Charlie doing the damn thing. Yo. On the steel wheels, pushing buttons, sliding sliders, tuning in, tuning out, doing all the things. And today's guest. John Jennings from Ronald Records. How you doing, man? Yes, nice to meet you. Thank you so much for having me. Very excited to uh, take some time to chat with you all today. You're yeah. excited? Yeah, I am. We have expectations now. We have to live up to this. Yes, Great. absolutely. Beautiful. <laughs> cool, cool, man. I dig it. Right on, man. Cool. Um, so uh, first thing I usually start with, I don't want to get a habit of summarizing people. So if you can, yeah. tell the people who you are and what it is you do. Yeah, Please. absolutely. Uh, my name is John. I'm one of the co-owners of Ronald Records. Uh, we're a family-owned business, so I own it uh, with my wife, Kelsey, and we have two children as well. Uh, and basically, I started Ronald Records 10 years ago as a record label, and uh, over time, uh, it turned into an online record store. And then uh, recently, in the last few years, we're able to actually move into a space. So. Uh, it's been a big evolution with the kind of title Ronald Records for me personally as like a passion project. And it's really uh, fun to get my whole family involved and just really do it all together. You know, so uh, I work uh, basically as a team and just kind of uh, the record store is the main priority. Then we also have uh, live shows as well. And then also just revamped the record label portion of it as well. Beautiful. As part of like a 10 year kind of anniversary of when I first started it. So awesome. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for bringing in CDs. City of Anthology, you said there's 12 different bands on here? So there's actually 23 different uh, acts total. They're oh, all from yeah. Vancouver. Uh, the first 12 are all exclusive tracks that had never been released before. So uh, basically just wanted to make a City of Vancouver anthology. Uh, you know, as we've started up the store, we've had some amazing people play in our store, in our space. And just really wanted to take the time to collect those folks into one kind of piece of, you know, technology where we can all listen to it as a as a city of Vancouver, you know, and and embrace it. It has every different genre you can think of on there. It'll go from electronic on one to hip hop on the next to folk rock and country, punk, everything you can kind of think of. Uh, but, you know, for me, it's just really important to showcase our local artists more, you know, and that was kind of the whole thought process behind it was, you know, we live so close to Portland and that's great, you know, but let's be proud of Vancouver, right? And let's be proud of our music scene and what can we do to help kind of support that? And that's really just kind of the mission behind it and why we wanted to start out uh, kind of relaunching by, you know, honoring kind of the city of Vancouver, which we call home. We're planting our roots here. We have a family, like I was saying, mm -hmm. uh, two kids, you know, doing the thing. This is where we, we're going to be. Uh, this is where we want to be. And we just want to do our part to help drive that culture as much as possible. Beautiful. And this is available at your shop, yeah? Yeah, yeah, it's well? online. It's online on our website and also in our shop. Uh, so featured right there, you know, definitely just trying to 
give that platform to the folks and just show that, hey, you know, if you want to listen to some local artists here, check this out. You have 23 different options. I guarantee you'll like at least a few of them, right? Yeah, exactly. And be super into them. So, um, you know, not every type of music is for everybody, and that's fine. But this is like a, a way of kind of showcasing like, hey, this is all that we do have to offer, right? And just kind of see where it goes from there. Right on. Uh, I'm going to come by your shop. I'll buy a dozen of them. I'll put them up here. People, you can come pick one up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to purchase a bunch of them, and you can have some here, too. Oh, wow. That's incredible. Thank you. Yeah, man. We appreciate that. Yeah. yeah that's, that's what it's all about is just, you know, having those local artists be able to have their music available somewhere. You know, that's mm -hmm. that's a huge thing. Just that one thing alone, mm -hmm. you know, to the artist, it means the world to them, you know. Mm -hmm. And so as kind of running this thing, looking at it from an artist's point of view while also running the business aspect, mm -hmm. just trying to balance those two things is really what we're trying to do. Beautiful. You know, even for a uh, – a smaller band, a local act, whatever, getting something pressed on wax or whatever you call it on CD, getting get in the studio and recording something. That's that's like, man, we're, we're, we took a next step. That's a big deal. Yeah, I was I very so. surprised that 12 people literally recorded, hey, this is a track that I just want to give you just for this. You know, that was not what I was expecting. Mm -hmm. I was hoping to maybe get one or two exclusive tracks, which mm -hmm. would have been awesome. But I was very overwhelmed by the amount of people that were like, oh, yeah, I'll hit the studio next week. You know, and, mm -hmm. and uh, so it turned into a really cool thing and then we did a listening party at our store and we invited all the artists out together to kind of meet each other uh, to have that opportunity to just you know mingle and hopefully have some more projects sprout up right on beautiful and you said you've been doing this for 10 this is a 10 year anniversary type thing of the original yeah uh ronald records as a record label yes right absolutely how'd you get into that are you a musician and all that stuff yeah cool. so played music i uh, started playing music when i was in high school mm -hmm. uh you know graduated high school went to college got a degree business awesome started my career everything kind of climbing the corporate ladder but there was always something missing you know mm -hmm. it was the the passion of the music art uh absolutely you know so i've always been in bands as well um not more recently i just kind of concentrate on family life but yeah. just uh, you know, working with uh, obviously bands that I was in as well, but also kind of continuing to grow that community. So, um, yeah, it originally started basically I had graduated college, had some time out, wanted to figure out what can I do in my spare time that would be able to have that kind of, you know, that passion of mine itched where I'm doing something that I truly love, not just going to work every day, working a nine to five. Right. Wow. And so it really just started out as just wanted to get involved with as many people as possible. So ended up working with folks from different countries, uh, all sorts of different things, wow. uh, releasing on vinyl, CDs, cassettes, uh, and just really trying to go for it as much as I could. Uh, as over time, it did kind of translate more into like a more of like an online store where I was bringing in other titles as well. Um, mm -hmm. Didn't enjoy that as much because it, it became more like just computer based. And to be honest with you, I, I miss the, the human element of it, mm -hmm. you know, and just having those connections. And the music community is so supportive of each other. You know, if you just give that opportunity for folks to connect, they, they'll connect, you know. And so that's been one of the biggest things, too, is just having a show with two different acts on it where they never even knew each other mm -hmm. before. But then, hey, guess what? After that. They're going to each other's shows. They're listening to each other's music. Some of them are collaborating, collaborating with each other, yeah. mm -hmm. making new projects. You know, and for me, that's what it's all about, you know, is just to be able to be part of that. Um, when I was growing up, I used to go to local shows all the time. Uh, as I kind of learned more about Vancouver, kind of realized that there wasn't much of an all ages opportunity here. So mm -hmm. really just wanted to lean in on that and as much as we could do. So we started out doing some live shows, really just like acoustic shows in our store. And then we were doing some like in the flea market alleys for Kindred Homestead. Uh, and then Alex offered us the opportunity to, to fill out the whole rest of the basement. And that was when uh, we took over the show space. So in January, uh, we took that over and we've been doing live shows now every Saturday mm -hmm. and also the first Friday of the month. So beautiful. So yeah. two days a week. Uh, so two days a week, only on the first week of the month. Oh, okay. So it's every Friday. Saturday okay. and then it's also the first Friday. And first Friday. Yeah. Which is a good pocket to get into because people are telling eh, it's a good little thing. Yeah. I mean, I heard uh, I was in your shop talking to somebody. Or maybe I was talking to TJ at yeah. the coffee shop. You guys are booked out a bit, yeah? Yeah, yeah. We're booked out until like June, which is crazy until June. to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I don't know how that happened. Uh, oh, when really? we first kind of started, we were... I mean, we were asking folks from the community to to start playing in our shop when we first started because, you know, we just 
kind of opened a record store by accident, to be honest. It wasn't necessarily the goal, but it kind of happened. And we just kind of decided to go for it as a family and just work as hard as we could to try to bring, you know, a record store that people would want to check out. And hmm. really just wanted to make a record store that we would want to go to Absolutely. at the end of the day, you hmm. know, and just kind of really take that approach. But the musician in me or just the artist in me of always being around music my whole life was like, well, what can we do to get the community involved and how can we keep them involved? So uh, originally it was, hey, anybody want to perform at our shop? Like, you know, we'll have anybody play, like, let us know to now where we're getting so overwhelmed with booking requests that it's, you know, I've, I've had somebody helping me out now, TJ, which is awesome. Nice. Uh, we kind of have a whole nother page kind of just dedicated to shows, you know, and but, you know, at the same time, we think that that's great and we want to try to offer to open up more dates possibly. So, you know, I know talking to Charlie here about maybe doing some things, uh, mm -hmm. different types of events even, uh, you know, we're really just trying to lean in on all types of performance arts. So it doesn't have to be just music. You know, it can be poetry. It can be comedy. It can be, you know, whatever you kind of want it to be. We want to be that place where you can feel accepted and feel safe that you can perform in our space. So... Uh, you know, with that, we've been getting a lot of requests, which is awesome, but we're also trying to see what we can do to maybe open up our calendar a little bit more to maybe even, uh, have more shows every week. So, uh, we'll kind of see what happens, but you know, the way I look at it, it's a good problem to have, you we'll know, just very, yeah. yeah, very, very thankful that so many people have been supporting the shows and, uh, you know, we weren't sure how it was going to work out with doing one show every single week. Uh, but it's been amazing, you know, and the best thing for me is to see people come back multiple weeks, yeah. not even really know who's playing, but they just came back because they want to support local music, you know? And to me, that's what it's all about. And uh, nothing makes me happier than that, so. That's awesome, dude. That's a beautiful, that's a beautiful thing right there. I love that. Um, I know uh, Charlie and I spoke about, you know, the thing he reached out to you about, and then we talked about a little bit here and doing something down here, and I was like, pretty sure they got a space over there. We yeah. went and checked it out. And that same day, we went and talked to somebody else. I was like, talk to this guy. I was like, one day, I was like, hey, yeah. look at this space. Look at this space. And I was like, yeah. Like, stuff is drawn there all of a sudden. Yeah. something You got something. We well, appreciate going. that. Yeah, man, you it's know? a beautiful thing. We're very right. excited that Alex gave us an opportunity to kind of have that space. You know, when we were talking about expanding to kind of take over the whole, you know, basement, we were a little weary of it at first because just the record store, we didn't necessarily need that space. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we talked to her and basically said, hey, you know, our idea would be to do live music weekly. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? You know, and it was like, absolutely, hey, let's do it. Yeah, let's have that be a, a space for the community. Let's see what we could do to try to build the community and give them a space to perform. So not only is that space used for shows, but we have like Girl Scout meetings there weekly. Nice. Uh, you know, there's a night a week where that happens. Mm -hmm. uh, there's crafting days, you know, just different things where – we want that to be a safe space where you can go and hang out and do whatever you want to do. Beautiful. Yeah. I remember when uh, we started building out the backspace at GFY, um, you know, we had the basement too. And I specifically brought Alex down. I was like, hey, what do you think about this space? And that was the first thing she said. She was like an event space, like comedy shows, uh, music, something like that. I was like, hmm, maybe not for me, but I like that idea. Yeah. And then it happened in her space with your, yeah. your, your behind it. So. Love that. Good. I like <laughs> That's how that amazing. I didn't even know that. Manifested or whatever. Right. It came, yeah. it came to be. <laughs> Absolutely. Spoke it into existence. That's good. Um, the space down there, uh, we went in there just to check it out the other day. Um, how many people would you say you can get in there? Yeah. So uh, it kind of depends on the show. So mm -hmm. a lot of, depending on what it is, people just want to sit down, right? So if we're sitting, we're going to have to fit kind of some less people in there, maybe around 30 people, which okay. is still pretty awesome. Uh, and then when we are doing standing shows, we usually can fit a few more folks in there. So, right uh, yeah, last, I mean, last night we had a great show. It was packed. Yeah. Nice. So the kind of the hallway people kind of start, um, and it's great. You know, you have space to dance if you want to, you have space to hang out with your friends, you know, bring your family. Um, so we try to make it comfortable, but also want to adjust depending on what the show is, right? Like if we have two hard rockin' bands or some punk bands or something, we're probably not going to have too much seating there, exactly, right? Yeah. Whereas some of the maybe folk artists, you know, folks want to sit down and mm -hmm. enjoy it, which is totally fine, right? So we kind of adapt it to whatever type of show we're doing, basically. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. When we went and looked at it, I was like, you can get probably this many, but you could have overflow in the hallway over here. Yeah. Why not? That's good. Um, 
it sounds like you're getting to a point you like need a door person and stuff like that, or it's all ages, right? So you don't have to check IDs. Yeah, so it's all ages, no IDs checking, which well, is great. Um, cover charge, all that stuff. Yeah, so we cool. do sliding scale. Uh, oh, we wow. we started doing a sliding scale of five to fifteen dollars when we originally opened. We were just doing free shows. Mm -hmm. Um, we've always compensated every single artist that's performed in our space. That was very, very important to me from the very beginning was, hey, no matter if it's a free show, no matter what, we are going to compensate the artists for their time, for their performance. So that's always been very crucial. Uh, but we had, you know, some, some regular amounts that we would give out to folks, but we started charging the sliding scale because we wanted to be able to offer them more, basically. You know, if you go to a free show, what's that show worth? Well, it's free. Mm -hmm. That's not worth anything. You're kind of saying that it's not really worth anything. But if you're saying sliding scale, hey, pay what you can. Also, if you don't have anything, guess what? We're not going to turn you away, right? Like, come on in. Like, thanks for being here. Come enjoy some live music, right? So, but we found people are very, very, you know, gracious with it, honestly. Like, you'll have folks that'll just throw in a 20, and just be like, no, hey, I appreciate what you're doing. This is going to live music. Thank you so much. Here you go, you yeah. know? And so, for us to be able to turn around and compensate the artists more, that's, you know, that's amazing. Yeah. It's such a great feeling. Whereas before it's like, yeah, hey, you know, we're giving them some and it's great to get something for performing. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. But for it to now be where they're getting truly compensated for, hey, if you have a giant show at our space, you're going to get a real good payout, you know. And as an artist, you know, a lot of these folks, like that's what they do as their profession. Mm -hmm. So it's a really, really important to have those spaces where you can actually make that happen getting paid for creating your art yeah sounds delightful right <laughs> man, man. that's beautiful dream. the dream exactly yeah the dream the yeah dream life that's great um all ages so shows so you don't do booze or anything like that no we don't okay. do any booze uh we just serve liquid deaths okay. uh cool. in our shop and then also uh kindred upstairs they also have non-alcoholic beverages right on uh, so we will do uh, bars sometimes uh, where we'll just have the non-alcoholic drinks basically available cool. uh, for folks to try even. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, they have some really tasty stuff. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. So uh, we've done a lot of samples just trying to get more folks kind of like trying it. Like, hey, if you're just going for the flavor of it, mm -hmm. like we can hook you up. You know yes. what I mean? Uh, and we found that that's pretty great. You know, we haven't had too many people trying to bring in booze. You know, I think that our shows are usually 6 to 8 p.m. So it's kind of a, a good time frame where you can still go really? out and do something else afterwards, right? I didn't realize they were that early. Yeah. So, I can still do that. Yeah. I figured I'd be in bed already. Yeah, no. So that's the best part about it is we found. And then I'm oh. starting to see some other shows starting to get a little earlier and everything. And it's like, hey, you know, I think that that's not a bad trend at all, right? Like people have families. We have exactly. things going on. And, you know, also, hey, guess what? You're getting out at 8. You could still go do something else, yeah. right, if you really wanted to. So... Um, it also works really well with some other shows. You know, Brick House right down the street from us, they host a lot of live music. Oftentimes their shows start like right when ours are ending. So that's super awesome where we're just like, bang, bang, hey, bang. why don't y'all go down the street now and mm -hmm. go support them as well, right? So um, just really building that out and, and just having that availability now. So mm -hmm. we have a community board where we want you to post any sort of flyer that you have. You know, I don't care if your show's in Portland, like, mm -hmm. you know, post it here. Maybe somebody will want to come check it out, right? Um, so just giving that availability to the artists and also just continuing to evolve that as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, love feedback from folks, always trying to talk to the artists themselves and, hey, what do you all think about this? What do you think about this? And really taking that knowledge that we're gaining and doing something about it to try to make that experience better every time. I ain't got much to say on that. That sounds fucking great. <laughs> That's beautiful. Uh, food. Do you guys serve any food there? Uh, we do not serve food. Um, so Would that, that be something you might be open to? Yeah. So we do have uh, some chips that we do have mm -hmm. in our store, but that's not uh, anything in particular. Uh, yeah. So that's kind of like the next steps, right? I was talking about the space. This show space has only been since January. So we are very new in this. And mm -hmm. it's like, hey, what could those next steps be? So uh, we've had a, a local company hit us up about maybe coming and serving some ice cream uh, in there and kind of doing a collaborative effort, something like that. And we're all about it, right? Yeah. We have a, a really good setup to where we have availability to sinks and everything upstairs, mm -hmm. right? Kind of in the back hallway. Um, so we're kind of set up for it, but we just, we're kind of just waiting for those opportunities yeah, to kind of uh, arise, to be honest. Like we do pop ups in the back here. That I'm just spitballing here. It could be a good opportunity for somebody who has a farmer's market stand or a burgeoning business. Like, hey, pop up your shop here and sell your tamales. Absolutely. Or something like that. Yeah. Tamales in a show. That sounds nice. Hey, I'll take some tamales. Yeah. 
<laughs> Just saying. Right on. No, absolutely. Yeah. And, and that is the thing, right? When you go to a venue, mm -hmm. you expect certain things, right? And so we're trying to make a venue here, right? Mm -hmm. So, hey, what are those extra things that we can kind of provide to that? So, yeah, naturally, I mean, I think that those are the right questions to be asking, right? Like, hey, what's next? What else can we do? What's next? Yeah. Beautiful. I like that. Yeah. What's next? Excellent. Um, I, you know, I've only been in Vancouver for, you know, almost 10 years now. Um, I always found it weird, you know, Briz is over there and has been there for a very long time. Yeah. Big in the music scene. There's lots of guitars and everything and bands we always love Briz. over there. Yeah. Um, but there was never really, that I know of, like a venue for bands here. And it seemed logical that, well, there's Seattle, there's Portland. I guess there's Olympia in the middle. I haven't been there too much. I don't yeah. know how much music scene's there. But like, hey, if you're touring and you're coming through, a bop between Seattle and Portland. Yeah. Vancouver makes a nice little Absolutely. bing. Yeah, we have a touring band coming through, uh, actually from Cleveland, that's going to be performing uh, in May. So we're super excited about that. Nice. So leaving that availability open, uh, we're working with some local record labels as well from Portland, and they have a lot of artists that they represent kind of from all over the country. Mm -hmm. So really saying, hey, look, this space is available. So if you want to do like an in-store for some of your artists, you know, not only do we stock all the local artists, you know, so if you're a local artist, we would love to stock your vinyl. Uh, please bring it down. Right on. Uh, but, you know, one of the, the very first thing you see when you walk into our store, the first vinyl you see is local artists. Like that's that's nice. what it's all about. Product so placement. Beautiful. first thing you see, right, we want you to pay attention to that music because, hey, guess what? You know, as I've I've only been in Vancouver for about eight years myself, okay. but. As I've grown to know and love this area, I've seen that the music scene here is amazing. Mm. But unfortunately, a lot of artists feel like they have to say they're from Portland just because of the fact that, you know, Portland obviously has a very established scene there, you know. So nothing against Portland, and we're going to be, we've had plenty of their artists uh, come over and play in our shop too, but we just really want to do our best to put Vancouver on the map and let everybody know that, hey, you know, there's some cool stuff happening here, too. It's not just all over there. So uh, that's been a very, very important kind of motivator kind of behind what we're doing, for sure. Right on, man. That's super good. I dig it. Your shop down there, it's it's a really cool space. You walk in there, it's well curated. Um, you know, I don't even buy a vinyl, but I find myself flipping through them. I'm like, oh, my God, remember this record? Stuff like that. You know, there's a, a VCR, and I went in there today, and there was Ewoks on there. I was like, holy fuck, Return of the Jedi type shit. And he's like, no, that's actually a spinoff. I'm like, all right, cool. It's a VCR. There's cool, like, memorabilia and um, a little bit of everything for everybody. Yeah. It's uh, very well curated. It's a great shop. Cool people to work there and run it. I mean, thank you. You're onto it, man. <laughs> well, we really That's appreciate good. that. That's yeah, so man. great to hear. Now, we, you know, to be honest with the the curating part, you know, most of that was Kelsey's vision. Right. You know, I I had a logo of Ronald Records from when I had first started it, mm -hmm. and when we kind of rebranded for the store, we wanted to have something a little more representative, a little more open. My old logo was kind of uh, looked a little screamo, I guess you can say. Um, screamo. And, uh, yeah, oh, it was just kind of like a monster holding another monster, and it was just kind of like the way that it was portrayed. It was okay. a little, little, uh, little rougher looking, I guess you could say. It looks kind of like a punk type thing. Okay. Um, so we just wanted to have a more accessible kind of approach to it. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, what was the heyday of vinyl, right? It was the 70s, right? So who doesn't love the 70s? And really just kind of leaning into that and nice. just kind of taking that approach. And then also listening to our customers. What do what do y'all want in here? You know, that is the most important thing. We take every single day, we have a notebook just like this, mm -hmm. where if you come in and you're like, hey, do you have any of this? No, we don't, but we'll get some ordered, right? Excellent. We want to have what you want to listen to in our store. It's very, very important to us. We're not trying to just be, you know, indie rock or punk. Uh, the store originally started kind of using like half of my personal collection to kind of get it going. Um, which was awesome, but mm -hmm. you know, there was a lot of kind of stuff that I listened to in there, like indie, punk, hip hop, mostly, you know, mm -hmm. so that it was like, for us, we had to learn to kind of embrace the other genres that maybe we didn't know as much about, you know, and we found that like our complete taste in music has changed entirely. That's awesome. Because we're just listening to vinyl, you know, almost 24 seven at this point, we have so many record players at home as well. We're always kind of spinning. Um, and guess what? Usually you're listening to older music that way, right? Because it's something that's already been released. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we just over time and as we get into something, we, you know, we want to have that for our customers as well. Hey, this is a staff pick. Check it out. You know, also 
come and we'll play it for you right now, right? That's like, great. let's yeah. check it out together. So mm. um, really just listening to the community and hearing what they want out of our store, I feel like has also been a really big game changer for us too. And you have turntables that you can purchase too, right? Yeah, absolutely. So you go one-stop shopping. Yeah, we try to make it like very easy for you. Uh, you know, nowadays a lot of the turntables actually connect to Bluetooth speakers, which is super, super easy. So a lot of people think that if you want to have a vinyl setup that you have to have this huge uh, receiver, you know, player, the speakers. You don't have to have that. Now, of course, a vintage, huge, nice setup will sound incredible, mm -hmm. right? But you can still get really good sound out of a newer, like an Audio-Technica type record player and just going into a Bluetooth speaker. I mean, Bluetooth speakers nowadays, they make them pretty nice, you know? So it, it might not be, like I said, the same, mm -hmm. right, as getting it all wired up, but it sounds pretty great. And it's it helps with people that maybe don't have a lot of space as well, yeah. right? So hey, guess what? I already had this Bluetooth speaker at home. Now, instead of connecting my phone to it, I'll connect the record player to it, right? Sweet. And so that's kind of a nice approach where we're like, hey, look, like time out. You don't need to purchase all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And we have it available, but really, you just need this as long as you already have something else to kind of help you get connected to it. So, right on. Uh, you know, taking that approach, like we just want to be open to everybody. So, you know, we're Hey, if you're a first time vinyl listener and you want to come in and learn more about vinyl, come on in. You know, we'd love to teach you how it works, how you, you know, start the record player, how you clean the records. Very, very important. Uh, a lot of folks never clean their records. And, you know, you definitely see that when you get, you know, people trading in stuff and you might think you have some really cool old Grateful Dead Beatles records, you know, and we'll take a look at them. And it's like, oh, man, like. What could have been, right? Like this has just been, you know, destroyed. But you know, obviously you loved it, and you know, you you did your thing with it. But uh, you know, so educating folks on, you know, how to, you know, vinyl is an investment. So how can you take that and make sure you're keeping it in good shape, right? It's not necessarily one of those things where you buy it and it loses its value as soon as you bring it home and open it, right? Hmm. Records, if you keep good care of them, they're worth you know, some of them, right? It kind of just depends yeah. what it is, but they can become worth a ton of money and it's not just that it's sealed, you know? So encouraging folks like, hey, you know, take this serious. This is something that could be worth something. Mm -hmm. Let's show you how to clean it so that you can take proper care of it and you can have it forever, right? And pass it down to your kids and kind of keep the whole circle going, yeah. right? We already went all the way to digital mm -hmm. and now we're back to vinyl, right? So it's like, now we're just in a circle at this point, yeah, you know? And so what else do we do? And um, if you're ever looking for eight tracks, we also have those. Um, so, you know, <laughs> and a few players actually that actually work, nice. uh, which is hilarious. Um, but yeah, like we just try to make it an interesting place for you to go and try to constantly keep it changing too. You know, we've, when we kind of first started, we, we decided, Hey, we're going to go for it full force for six months and see what happens. And, you know, the community has just really embraced us and taken us in and, really shown us that, hey, this is a place that we want to go, you know, and we had no idea that that was going to be the case, to be honest. It was a big, big risk that we took and definitely very happy with how things are working out and just excited to continue to grow with the community. Beautiful, man. I love that. Hey, Charlie got fascinated by something. We, it was a, what was it, a receiver? Your eyes lit up over there. You're like, whoa, look at, I could use one of these things over there. Yeah, I, uh, I have a wonderful old record player but I had to, I, I lost my uh, receiver and my speakers in a, in a move. So oh, no. I'm looking to rebuild the setup somehow, some way, somewhere. So yeah. we'll see yeah. how it goes. But I'll I, let us yeah, know. I have, an old, I have an old 80s Technics direct Ooh. drive. There you go. Table Ooh, that I, I a buzzword there. <laughs> Tec Technics is a great brand. Oh, yeah? Right on. That's, that's a good one to hold on to for sure. So especially if you have a really nice record player, mm -hmm. like, you know, the other thing, they're important as well, but it starts with the record player, right? Mm -hmm. So it's very, very important. A lot of folks nowadays, they'll start out with like a briefcase looking record player. I don't know if you've seen too many of those. Yeah. The Crosleys and Crosleys, we, have, we yeah. have nothing against them. Like mm -hmm. that's totally fine. It's a very good beginner record player to get into it. Um, but just kind of showing people like, hey, like this is how it sounds like this, but it can sound that much better, right? As you grow and, and decide, hey, is this something that I actually want to do, yeah. right? Like a lot of folks will try it out and they'll learn that, oh, wow, this is amazing. I want to keep doing this. So I want it to sound better, right? 
or I want it to sound fuller. I have, you know, I want to connect some speakers to it, different things like that. So um, just that audience and kind of seeing what they're looking for. But, you know, whether it be a beginner record player or a more higher setup, we want to be able to offer all of that, right? Because there's nothing wrong with one or the other. It's just, it's up to your preference. You know, we'll be honest with you and tell you, hey, this is more of a beginner one, Mm -hmm. especially for younger folks, I would highly suggest, right? Um, a beginner one, but you know, if you're looking to kind of take it more seriously, you want to keep your records in great shape. You want to have a really nice record player so that you know you're you're taking them not top notch and you're keeping your collection. And you know, you never know what you can have, and you never know what can become valuable one day. That's yeah. kind of the wild thing about records. You know, it could just be one record is like, oh wow, the you know the blue version of this particular record is worth five hundred dollars, but if you have the black one, it's only worth twenty, right? supply and demand maybe they only made 200 of them you know people get really really far into the vinyl world where you have some people that want to collect every single color of every single record (laughs) that comes out you know and and that's awesome but you know do you does everybody need nine copies of the same record probably not you know um but it's fun just kind of getting to learn the different types of vinyl collectors that are out there and and you know growing the relationships with them as well i can dig it man Nice. Yeah, I remember uh, working in Philly. There was a guy uh, we worked with. Uh, he was in a band, and they pressed a record, and he gave me one. And he was like, "That's that's on red vinyl." I was like, "Cool." <laughs> he was like, "No, fuck, cool, man." I'm like, "Yes, it is really cool. Thank you." <laughs> I didn't really appreciate it, but I see how some people would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was nice. Yeah, we see some people. You know, sometimes you don't know what color the record is. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, it just comes. We don't know exactly which pressing it is. You'll see them open them sometimes in their store, and we'll see like people's reactions. Like you'll see like nice. a splatter record, and you'll just see like somebody just so stoked out of their mind, like "Oh my god, look at this! This is so great!" You know, and it's like cool, <laughs> you know. But you know, whatever makes people happy, right? Like I needed that blue and orange splattered record, and that makes me happy. You know, at the end of the day, that's what it's all about: is is having that music that you connected with, and having it be part of your collection. You know, beautiful. Yeah, man. I've heard stories about people uh, having just bananas setups as far as their personal listening setup. I think Henry Rollins is known to have a really <laughs> significant one, right? Yeah. I think it might have been on Rogan. He told a story about playing a certain record on his setup and people start like crying like it physically affected them yeah you know feeling the sound waves of it at this certain level and frequency it was like man they, they were shedding tears about it yeah um, but yeah I even I have a a homie, he's an older dude, but really into music. He has a house with a sunken in living room, like old 70s style and whatnot. Nice. But yeah. his speakers are angled and pitched at a certain way for that room. And he was like, man, it's there's nothing like it. That's so great. That sounds really, people really get into that stuff. See, and that goes off right off the same thing. You know, oftentimes what we hear is, you know, vinyl is like the closest to live music. Mm. You know, you feel those vibrations, right? Like mm. that's what you're talking about. The yeah. nicer the setup the more you can feel kind of every single note of that music, you know? And so that's why, you know, we have such a deep appreciation for it. Huge live music lovers, you know, obviously we're doing our space, but also just shows in general, but you know, the vinyl aspect of it, you know, to me, it gets, that's the closest thing to the live music, right? So how do you continue to kind of relive those memories, you know, spin it on record and have that nostalgia, right? Throw it on. Um, as technology has progressed, I mean, you mentioned some of them, you know, went to vinyl to eight track, which I, I remember distinctly being a young man. There was a little eight track holder. There was a bunch of them. And then my pop got in a car wreck. So we got an inexpensive oh. car, but it had a, um, eight track player in it. I was like, I'm, I, we have things that fit in there. <laughs> Gary McFarland. I don't know who that is. Like <laughs> Sly in the family stone. He's got a cool haircut. And I was like, Oh fuck on a track in a, in a vehicle that was really cool and then it went to uh you know tapes and then cds and then digital and now it's coming back yeah um quality of sound yeah i have also heard that modern music when it's mixed in the studio is now mixed for ear pods yep from your perspective doing it for 10 years and being involved in it what are your what are your thoughts on and you say you like vinyl because it's closest to the sound yeah what are your thoughts on the progression of that and how it's evolved? Yeah, and that's you know that's what we were talking about, like mainly listening to older music, right? Mm-hmm. Like the records, you know, we could feel them more on the older music, uh, you know, and that's kind of I think that we more gear towards that, I guess you could say. 
Um, but yeah, a lot of the newer recordings, they're not made specifically for vinyl. You can have them mastered for vinyl, exactly. which is awesome. Mm -hmm. Uh, but not every single thing that you put on vinyl sounds amazing, unfortunately. Mm. Uh, there's, there's very well-known, terrible pressings in the vinyl community. Really? Obviously, we try to, to stay clear of them, but there's pressings that just don't go exactly right and for whatever step of the process, and everybody kind of knows that they don't sound good. Huh. But it's still a pressing, and it's still out there. So that, to me, is bizarre, right? You would oh, think so that that would get caught at some sort of a quality <laughs> step like, somewhere. Did you listen to this? <laughs> right, you know, but, uh, you know, it's, it's definitely something that gets talked about a lot in the vinyl community is, oh, wow, hey, what is truly the best pressing of Dark Side of the Moon? Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon. It's been pressed a million times, right? Mm -hmm. What's the greatest pressing of it, right? Like, that's a very... Hotly, you know, which one? Yeah, which, exactly. What, and, I, and I don't know which one, no? right? Which one do you like? But, you know, uh, the 50th anniversary one that just got remastered last year sounds incredible. Nice. Does it sound better than the one that was 30 years ago? Maybe a little bit, but it has different types of elements, right? Maybe the stereo sounds a little bit better, but you have some of the older recordings or mono recordings. Well, I happen to really like that sound of mono recordings, mm -hmm. right? Like, so depending on what it kind of is, like, I think that it kind of, you have to kind of have to take each one as it comes, I guess, if that makes sense. But definitely newer music, the way that it's made, the way that it's recorded, mm -hmm. most of it is not made for vinyl. Mm -hmm. But a lot of stuff that gets released on Spotify doesn't usually get released on vinyl either, right? Like, there is a lot of stuff that gets released on vinyl, but not everything, right? And so I think that that's also a really important aspect of it as well. But on the same hand, or on the other hand, you also have like cassette tapes. Everybody knows cassette tapes don't sound great, right? But it's a cassette tape. It's a cool little tape that I have in my hands and yeah. I can have it forever. It's a physical thing. Yes. Yeah, it's a physical thing. Hey, guess what? I bought a new to me vehicle that mm -hmm. has a cassette player. We have a lot of those folks come in and they're just like, wow. You guys have so many tapes and yeah. you know, and we're like, wow, that's that's so great. And they're like, Yeah, that's all I can listen to in my car, you know, and, and that happens more often than not, to be honest with you. So just kind of staying ahead of it, you know, we didn't know that CDs kind of were doing as well as they did when we kind of first started opening. Mm -hmm. We really were concentrating on kind of vinyl and kind of cassettes because those had kind of been like those nostalgic items that I guess we all kind of well not everybody, but a lot of people decided that they still need in their lives. So really just kind of wanted to concentrate on those at first, but as we've been open, more and more folks coming in looking for CDs, right? So our CD selection has had to expand immensely because basically what we're finding is a lot of the high school age kids nowadays are finding their parents' CDs. Most of their parents are probably around my oh, wow. age or so. And hey, guess yeah. what? What did we listen to? We listened to CDs, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, I got my son at home finding my old CDs, right? Like things like that that happen where you know, now that becomes my CD. And hey, guess what? I kind of have a built-in collection, whereas my generation didn't necessarily always have vinyl. You know, I might have had a vinyl collection kind of growing up with my grandparents kind of always kind of listening to different things and different aspects, but, you know, not everybody had that experience, yeah. right? So CDs have definitely been something where it was the most popular physical, you know, media. It's not anymore. Vinyl has passed it again, mm -hmm. which is which is wild. Wow. Uh, but here locally speaking, mm -hmm. we, you know, want to definitely make sure we do our best to try to offer as many CD titles because that's just been something that we've noticed as we've been open is, hey, wow, there's a lot of people coming in here for CDs. Well, let's get more. Right. Nice. So um, listening to your audience and, you know, embracing that culture. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, something, I mean, there's something about having that physical thing, too. I distinctly remember, you know, uh, buying uh, Appetite for Destruction on a tape. And then, you know, the album art, controversial and whatnot, but then all the lyrics and whatnot. It's like, yeah. what the fuck did he scream in there? I was like, <laughs> oh, no, he said that, all right? Wow. You know, having some liner notes and all that thing. Yeah. Um, digital music, you know, I don't know if it's, they still have it or you, know, you can Google what the lyrics are or something like yeah. that. But having that physical thing, um, yeah, that was, that was always something cool, like opening up this treasure map of yeah and having your favorites you know yeah. and having your favorites and not you know where the digital world like you go on spotify you literally can listen to anything it's that's nice. great but at the same time like that like there are so many different options out there right so yeah. uh you know when you have that physical media you've decided that hey i want to purchase this and i want this to be with me right and you have that attachment to it and that is a much different special feeling than hey i have a bunch of songs on my phone mm -hmm. And hey, guess what? I lost my phone last week, and now all my songs are gone. 
right? Like different things like that have happened. Mm -hmm. I remember when uh, iPods first started, I put all my music on there. My iPod broke or, you know, back in the day before it was, you know, they were what they were. And um, as different things like that happen, you know, I think that that's kind of what results to people going back to the physical aspect of it, which is like, wow, I really miss holding this physical Mm -hmm. item in my hand and having the time to enjoy it. Look at the lyrics as I'm listening to it and really just feel that music, you know, because at the end of the day, that's what the artists want you how how they want you to experience their music, right? Mm-hmm. They don't want you to just hear 30 seconds of it on Spotify, skip to the next song. Like, they want you to enjoy their album. You know, they put those songs in that particular order for a, a particular reason, right? And why? Why did they do that, right? Like, maybe you could figure it out, right? Like, cracking the code of the lyrics. What are they talking about? Mm-hmm. Like, those are just the different things that I used to always kind of, you know, think about and wonder about. And, and I think that it's it's really good, you know, to kind of have that imagination and the aspect of actually seeing the words and interpreting it for you and what it means to you. Yeah. Yeah. The art of creating a record in its totality. Like these, this is the track list. Yeah. And these songs are in this order for a reason. And you know, what is it? You know, the wall, this one cuts off and it goes right into it. And it's just a big loop. Yeah. Um, what was the thing about the, uh, the newest, uh, Kendrick one? It was like, oh, if you play it backwards yeah. it's a certain way, it's like, oh, there's so much stuff to be had with it. Yeah. You could say a lot with the uh, with music. And then he re-released it backwards, you know, really? which is like, yeah, oh, yeah, he actually re-released a deluxe edition of it with the tracks all backwards. And it's amazing. It's like you're listening to a completely different album. You That's know, it's, awesome. Yeah. It's, yeah, man. it's great. Love That's it. great. Different perspective. I distinctly remember the first time seeing a CD. I was in second grade third grade, excuse me. And, uh, in the school I was at, you couldn't be in the concert band, you know, playing a concert instrument until you were, I think fourth grade or something like that. But, um, Mr. Rischel was the music teacher and he offered Suzuki, Suzuki method violin. He was a professional violinist, played orchestra, fucking musical genius, Amazing, yeah. you know, and you know, there was eight or 10 of us in there and he was like, you know, end of year party, come over to my house. We'll have cupcakes and barbecue. Yeah. It was like, oh, come listen to some music. And we went into his basement. It was probably a room this size. And it was full of bookshelves, full of CDs. And I was like, I just walked into fucking NASA. I don't know what any of this. I've never seen any of this. And he had you know, a tremendous setup with all the speakers. And here we are, you know, seven, eight-year-old kids being like, is there any more fucking cupcakes? And he's playing us beautiful music on a beautiful work of art through CDs. And it was like, we didn't really appreciate it, but it's burning my brain. I'll never forget that. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Music can touch you in many different ways. Yeah. Look at how vivid that memory is. Oh, it's have, you know? burning my brain. Yeah. I mean, working in that room, I was like, holy shit, this guy's into music. That's incredible. Yeah. Musical genius. Suzuki method. Of Love it. Learning how to play the violin. Cool, man. Still play the violin? I do not. I could probably, I mean, it's a strained instrument, so I could probably pick it up and make some musical yeah. sounding things come out of it. I'd probably hold it like this and do a little bit better, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah figure it out. <laughs> yeah. My son's learning that right now in school too. So that's nice. Exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, uh, upright bass, somebody I live with, she played bass and there was an upright bass in the place. And I was like, the <laughs> strings, I go this way. Orange cheese, white cheese, all chase same. <laughs> boom, ba doom, ba doom, ba doom. It took me a hey, half like hour. I got it. Yeah. Du, du, du. Just like, got to fill the right position. Like, and yeah, yeah, exactly. My shit was all fucking cockeyed and everything, but <laughs> I was like, pretty good, man. Yeah. It's fun. Just pick it up and go at it sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, I don't listen to a whole lot of music anymore. You know, I put on a fucking AI DJ on Spotify for the thing. You yeah. Know, there's some bangers that come out of it. I was like, what the fuck's that song? Who's that? And I hit the like button. What is some music you are crushing on right now? Yeah, so I'd say as far as like uh, more of a, an artist that would be, you know, not just local, because I definitely have some local artists that mm-hmm. I want to highlight, but, uh, you know, Krongbin is an awesome <laughs> band, uh, instrumental. Oh, they have a new album so coming out good. next month. It's so amazing. Yeah. Glad you guys know who they are. Oh, yeah. uh, that's incredible. Uh, you know, and really uh, another one that's kind of out there in left field, but almost a complete opposite. Uh, there's this rap group, uh, they're called Angry Black Men. Uh, okay. They're from Chicago. Uh, underground hip hop, amazing. They just rap over the craziest beats and I just love what they talk about. I love their point of view on life uh, and kind of what it is to live in America uh, right now. And so that's a, that's a big one for me. Nice. Uh, and then locally, spe- lo- uh, locally speaking, mm-hmm. um, I am gonna be working with, uh, we are gonna be working with four local artists. So. 
Uh, Mob Rule uh, is a local producer. Uh, he makes hip hop beats. We just uh, released a cassette tape for him actually this week, nice. uh, which is super exciting. Uh, really great guy. He's been making music for many, many years here in Vancouver. Um, so really, really excited to work with him and get like a physical media for him. He had never had a physical release before. So that oh, was wow. a really big moment for him all digital, all making music for 15 years. And this was kind of the first time to actually have a physical beat tape. So <laughs> super exciting for him. Uh, and, uh, Lincoln's beard, if you've heard of them, I've seen their name around town a lot. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, partnering with Lincoln's beard this year to release a vinyl record, uh, of some new recordings of theirs. So super excited. Uh, they sent me over the tracks. There's like 20 tracks to dig into. Right it's uh, incredible work. Um, really just excited to be part of that process. Mm -hmm. uh, and then two other ones uh, as kind of like the initial lineup of Ronald Records. Uh, there's a duo named Introducing the Machine, uh, which has local two local artists uh, named Sarah and Eileen. Uh, and they're incredible. They're a country folk duo. Uh, so like I said, we're all over the map. You know, this is going to be a record label that works with all different types of music. Yeah. Uh, you know, and then uh, lastly, so we had the Marlboro Lincoln's Beard, uh, and then the last one is going to be, uh, his name is Memory Derelict, and what he is is an electronic artist, so that's going to most likely be our next uh, release, and really just kind of working with the artist through their whole process mm -hmm. uh, from the other side now. You know, I'm kind of used to being the one of making the songs and putting them in the order, and now it's like them sending me the songs, you know, as they're recording them. And hey, you know, what do you and Kelsey think of this? And to me, that's super exciting, you know, to be part of the process that some local artists have kind of allowed us to kind of enter their sphere yeah. and to help them kind of with that platform. So really what we're trying to do with these artists is just trying to give them a bigger platform, basically just saying, hey, look, these are four Vancouver artists that we believe in, that we love, and we really think that y'all should listen to them too. So they're actually the first four tracks on the compilation that we just put oh, out. Oh, beautiful. So, yeah, if you want to check that out. Yeah, um, definitely will. But, you know, the rest of the track list is also incredible. There's a lot of incredible people on there, depending on, it doesn't matter what type of music you listen to, there's something on there for you, so. That's great, man. Yeah. I could dig it. Um, your role as a record label uh, record label executive. Uh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> somebody sends you 20 tracks, 20 tracks. They want to make a record. Yeah. You got to cut it down to 15 or 12 or something like that. Yeah. What is your role in that with the artist? Yeah, absolutely. So Lincoln's Beard is a great example. They mm -hmm. have 20 tracks ready to go. Mm -hmm. We want to break it down to 12. So it's, hey, oh, really? you know, as they've gotten to know me, yeah. hey, you know, what do you think? You know, we trust your judgment. Also, if you have some close people in your network and you want to share them with them as well, I'd love to hear their feedback. Yeah. So uh, what Lincoln's Beard has really done is said, hey, you know, we want you to kind of help us with this and very excited. But, you know, how can we do it together? You know, so a lot of those other artists on there, I'll send it to Mob Rule. Hey, Mob Rule, what do you think about these? Nice. Check them out. You know, tell me your 12 favorite. Kelsey, what are your 12 favorite? And the band is very receptive to, hey, we just want to make – we love all these songs, um, and we're going to definitely use all of them, but we want to make that record that connects with everybody. Mm. And uh, so it's, it's super exciting, you know, and then going through the vinyl process, it's going to take a few months to get them made uh, once kind of the track list is finalized. Uh, but just taking the bands through that entire process, you know, I've had bands that I've been in before that have had vinyl press, so I kind of know how it works and everything, but finding those local connections too. So these CDs were, were produced uh, by a local company called Crave Dog out of yeah. Portland. Uh, all the merch we make is all locally sourced. So uh, our shirts, they're made here in town. Uh, our hats, our beanies, everything. We want to try to keep it as local as possible. So Dollars in the community. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, that's super, super important to us and just figuring out what we can do to continue to drive that. Nice. Yeah. Going back to the last uh, podcast, Socially Responsible. Yes. I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I'm still <laughs> unclear on that after three hours of talking it, but it's perspective. But keeping dollars in the community, I think that's socially responsible. You're doing great. Love. Thank you. Cool, man. Um, have you been in, you know, you've done music and recorded. Yeah. Have you been in the booth with some of these people putting tracks down? Uh, yeah. So I did go over to, uh, with Mob Rule, at least as far as kind of like the finishing touches on it mm -hmm. uh, of the release. Uh, but I have open kind of standing invitations. Like sometimes I'll go to their practices uh, oh, when they're no. jamming. Um, really just want to try to kind of build out that community and that partnership, you know. 
letting people know that like, hey, I want to work with you and I want to work with you for the right reasons can kind of be scary to some people sometimes, you yep. know? Um, and so it's kind of like, well, what's the catch here? Well, mm -hmm. the catch is, is, hey, we started a record store that is doing much better than we ever expected. And we're very, very thankful for that. But what else can we do? Yeah. You know, I used to do the record label, loved it, mm -hmm. kind of canned it at a certain point. So it was like, hey, now that the record store is doing as it well as it is, we can have that availability and that bandwidth to be able to take on more and to be able to help promote some local artists ourselves. So uh, really just kind of trying to have those three aspects build all together. So mm -hmm. a venue, a label, and a store, and trying to see what we could do to continue to mingle those, right? Yeah. Like. When we have an artist, guess what? We're going to do a listening party for your record mm -hmm. a day before it comes out. We're going to do a release show for your record at our store. Mm -hmm. um, you also can come back and play kind of whenever you want, right? But we're going to help you with that those aspects. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to do a little tour, you know, continuing to build more connections with different places, different record stores. Hey, you know, would you be interested in having an artist come play in your space? You know, different things like that. So yeah. that's super exciting uh, as well to see some of the artists that have performed in our space then go and perform in other places as well. Yeah. You know, that's super, super exciting. So uh, just kind of continuing to build them all together and also knowing that, hey, it can continue to change and we just want to kind of adapt and kind of as it comes, let's kind of see what happens and let's go from there, basically. That's great. Um, in your interactions being in the studio with some of these bands, uh, do you have a relationship with some of them where you would feel comfortable to be like, hey, bass player, try it not so noty. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Absolutely. Yeah. And they'll, they'll ask my opinion too. Oh, that's I mean, great. They'll, hey, it's open hey, conversation. What do you think of this? Beautiful. Oh yeah. It's very, very open. Right. It's, Hey, well, first of all, I'm a fan of your music, right? Mm -hmm. Cause I'm asking to work with you. So mm -hmm. there's, there's one aspect to it, but if you want to know my opinion on something, absolutely. Right. And maybe we can come up with something together to help kind of move it in a different direction, you know? And, and, uh, so that's been super exciting. And then also just deciding, you know, playing live. Hey, did you think that we should play this song next? Or do you think it'd be better at the end? You know, I love those sort of conversations where yeah. some people might be bored out of their mind, like trying to decipher a track listing or what goes where. But to me, that's super exciting and I'm yeah. super into it. So, uh, letting the artists know that like, Hey, I'm just very passionate about music and I'm here to help and here to kind of listen and just interpret. And then also give you my opinion on things, uh, looking at it from more of a business standpoint, you know, I've been, on the artist side, and then I've also have a, a business background. So how can we kind of work together, but let's also keep in mind kind of a good strategy behind it. You know, to me, there's nothing worse than you creating a piece of art that you love, you wanna put out into the world, but not properly promoting it or taking mm -hmm. the time to let it kind of digest and you have a plan of attack and you know, hey, I wanna try to set up some interviews or I wanna try to set up some release shows that is kind of the approach that I'm trying to help out with the artists. Now, a lot of these artists that I'm already working with, they already know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. They're great, but I want to at least offer up my opinion. Exactly. Hey, what do you think about this? Mm -hmm. You know, and it becomes a discussion and not that every single thing that I want to do happens because it's a relationship, yeah. right? We and they're talk artists. back and forth <laughs> and we're all honest with each other and that you're an artist and mm -hmm. Hey, guess what? It's your music, yeah. right? I don't want to own your music. That's all you. I just want to help promote your music and I want to help drive and try to lead to a bigger platform for you is really what we're trying to do. Beautiful. Um, I've been fortunate enough to be in the studio uh, once or twice and put some stuff down and get it recorded. That pro I highly recommend it to anybody. If you can get in there and just, you know, be in the sound booth and watch the process. I mean, it could be long and drawn out and tedious and tiresome, um, but watching the creation happen there is absolute fucking sparks of magic that happen. Yeah. Not all the fucking time. Sometimes yeah. it takes a long time to get there, but the whole process is fucking beautiful. Absolutely. Yeah. Especially when you look back at it, right? You, know, you hear stories about, you know, Johnny Cash doing 50 takes, and it's the last one. His voice is fucking ruined, and that's the one they get. <laughs> or um, what was it? Uh, not Dwayne Almond. Um, the other Almond brother. Fucking uh, Greg Allman. Yes, yes, yes. You know, doing that, uh, what did he do? Not Midnight Rider. Was it Midnight Rider? In one take. Yeah. Nobody else was in the fucking studio. It was him, right. in, the, him in the booth and the other guy on the board. And he was like, I think, I think that's it. You know, that yep. magic can happen like that. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. 
anybody that makes music, I highly recommend just record fucking everything. Record all your jam sessions. You don't need to never know when that fucking blip of magic is going to be there. Yes. And That's then cool. release your music. Yes. Release yeah. your music. Give it to the people. You know, I'm guilty of that as well. You yeah. know, we've all made things and it's like, eh, I don't know. Like, you know, maybe not. Mm -hmm. Just do it. You know, life's short. You, you don't know what can come of it. Right. right. Like get it out there in the world. Show people that you're just being your real self and show it to everybody. You know, that there's a beauty to that alone. Just taking that step. Absolutely. You know, it's it's a huge Huge thing. It's like, here I am naked to the world. It's out there now, you know? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it's beautiful. That's super good, man. Um, something that's been popping up recently, like um, in videos and Instagram and stuff, that I I really like the format out of it. Um, I'm not super familiar with it, but I've seen some really good music. A band you mentioned, Krongbin, yeah. has been on it. You know, huge acts too, but uh, Tiny Desk. Oh, yeah, it's incredible. Tell us about t Tiny Desk. And Absolutely incredible. So, you know, Tiny Desk uh, is mainly known for kind of giving a platform to like indie artists, mm -hmm. which is super, super amazing. But as time has evolved, you've been having bigger artists be like, hey, what's going on over mm -hmm. there? You know, and so we've had some amazing like, I don't know if you've seen like Juvenile's performance was amazing. Right. I mean, you got Scarface on there. Usher Scarface was, Usher, Scarface yeah. was so good. Yeah. Usher was so good. Scarface was bananas. And what's so cool about it is they're just being stripped down to their bare self. Action Bronson. I don't know if you've seen his. I don't know if I've seen his. He yet. was on an edible <laughs> during course. the tiny desk. I would expect nothing And literally, less. like, through the performance goes, oh, it just hit. You know? And then <laughs> he's just, he just keeps going, you know? Amen. And so what I think is you're seeing, like, that glimpse of vulnerability there because mm -hmm. – they're just literally sitting there and they're playing for you. And yeah, there's still some effects going on, but it's a lot less effects than what you normally see from a performance. You know, mm -hmm. whereas you go to a big concert hall, absolutely you're seeing that band perform, but there's effects, there's amplification, right? There's all these different things. But Tiny Desk does a really great job just stripping that all down, yeah. you know, to the bare bones and just really making some cool stuff, you know. And uh, we've had some artists kind of come in and when we used to do shows just in our, our record store, mm -hmm. kind of say to us like, oh, this kind of has like a tiny desk vibe to it. Yeah, and I'm man. like, that was a huge compliment. Yeah. Like, hey, that's not what we were trying to do, but thank you so much. Yeah. And hey, yeah, we love tiny desk as well, you know, and uh, Mac Miller, you know, his uh, last album that he made when he was alive, his very last performance or even his actual first performance of the songs from his album, mm -hmm. Swimming, was only on tiny desk. And so they ended up taking those songs and actually pressing it on vinyl too, which is super cool. I mean, that's uh, an iconic clip of him and uh, Thundercat hitting that lick on the bass. I mean, that's suck. that's burned in my brain, and that that's going to go down as just you know, yeah, an iconical musical moment. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, he was getting ready to go on a whole tour, and this was going to be like his little warm-up show, mm -hmm. and then he passed away. Yeah. And so that was like the only memory that you have of him performing some of those songs from yeah. that record. Mm -hmm. So that's. Super special, you know, yeah. and uh, the vinyl itself is pretty cool. On the back side of it, they screen printed his signature from that day. So mm -hmm. he wrote, like, Love Always, Mac. Nice. And it's, like, huge on the back of the record. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's a, it's a good little piece of memory. Beautiful. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they've gotten to a point. I don't even know, like, is there, like, an audition process? Because, like you said, it started out as, like, a, like for indie small stuff to yeah. get on there. And now huge acts are getting on there. I won't even know what the process would be. Do you have they do it? They do submission, like open kind of submission. Oh, like, right on. Yeah, at least once a year that I'm aware of. Mm -hmm. And basically they'll they'll check them all out, and if they like it, they'll give mm -hmm. you a platform. So that's kind of like the – they still do that. Now, obviously as the bigger artists are going on there, I think it's probably less space for some of the mm -hmm. smaller folks. But, um, yeah, no, there still is a process. I'll see, you know, local artists even – I'll see them record a clip and they'll put, you know, they'll tag tiny desk submissions on it, which is super cool. And basically they're just trying to get their music out there and nice. hope that somebody will see it and hopefully it sparks some sort of interest. Right. Beautiful. Yeah, man. Great platform. Yeah. I love yeah, that. Man. It's so good. Um, do you have earbuds? You listen to music in earbuds? Yeah. Yeah. Right on. Do you have, uh, like headphones at home? Do you listen to it? Yeah. 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 Do you have a, like a, I know some people, I've worked with people or been in uh, the studio with people and like, these aren't Sony headphones. I'm not going to use them. Yeah. But those are the best. Do you have a perfect, uh, a I have brand a pair of Bose that yeah, had, yeah. For, I have a pair of Bose stereo uh, headphones that 
I invested in a long time ago, and mm-hmm. they still work great. So, nice. uh, you know, occasionally my son will grab them or something. And I'm like, no, 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 not that one. Those are the special <laughs> ones. Uh, but uh, <laughs> you know, they get mistaken. I mean, they look just like headphones, yeah, right? Exactly. But um, but no, that's kind of like my chosen uh, one. And then mm-hmm. I'll use like AirPods. You know, okay. if I'm just out and around the house or doing some, do, you know, something around the house or something like that. I'll use AirPods, but, uh, you know, the, the, the over ear headphones are a much better experience overall, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Compared to like an AirPod. So, Agreed. um, definitely always, uh, prefer that, especially anything studio wise for sure. Yeah. Nice. I've, uh, I've used the over ear ones. I had a pair of the still connected ones to the thing. I wasn't a big fan of them. I, I think it was just the thing in my ear. Yeah. It just felt uncomfortable, but it is what it is. Face your own. Um, I heard something recently. Uh, it was Rick Rubin yeah. on one of his podcasts when he was on that you know book tour and whatnot. He said when he walks on the beach, he uses air tubes. Are you familiar with that? No. I pulled it up recently because like, oh, I'm sure they're a million dollars. It was like, you can get it for 19 bucks. Really? But it's, uh, huh. you know, it still plugs in. Yeah. But at a certain point, it goes to this like air tube. So it's not like electronics in your brain or anything like that. Love it. Wow. Air tube headphones. Yeah. I'm not sure what the science behind it. But hey, that's cool. No, I didn't know about that either. Yeah. And they're relatively inexpensive, right, Charlie? They can get a pair for 20 bucks or something like that. Doesn't I'm sure there's different great. levels of it. Yeah, but they even have over-the-ear ones, too. Yeah. I uh, I might try a pair wow. of them just to check it out. I kind of want to try that, too. Charlie, I see the look on your face. Are you unfamiliar with them as well? I, I had not heard of these. Yeah. I mean, I guess it makes sense, but, yeah, I hadn't heard of these at all. I mean, some guy, Rick Rubin, said he uses them, so I don't know. Yeah, no big yeah, deal. I mean, Rick maybe Rubin. good or bad. It's funny because it popped up Rick Rubin, actually, on there. <laughs> yeah, look yeah on the search. <laughs> maybe he has a stake in the air tubes <laughs> <laughs> or something. Uh, oh, here's this audio setup. Okay. That's amazing. Oh, yeah, Huberman. There you go. Hey, he was on Huberman talking about it. You know, because he's got a very specific routine that he talks about being, you know, he does these certain things, but he goes for a walk on the beach and yeah. air tubes. Love it. Yeah, because he didn't want the digital stuff in his brain. I was like, yeah. he said the sound is good. So, I mean, from that guy, I got to take it a little bit. Yeah, no, I, yeah. I would definitely Does listen it have to any, that advice. I mean, just a picture of it. Yeah, it's plugged in, but then from a certain... Yeah. Now it just turns yep, into the, like a... The drivers are down here, and then... The who's? The drivers. Oh, okay. yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know who's steering, but the drivers are there. <laughs> the <laughs> uh, the electric electromagnetic signal from the device is just what drives... The drivers, right? That's steering, technically. Roger that. And it's moving up and down and sending. Otherwise, because, right, in the headphones, like, the Mm -hmm. driver's in here. Okay. That's what it's saying. So it's moving that away from your head. Okay. Like you're saying. So the driver's away, and then it sound travels through the tube. Only sound waves reach the user's ear. Only sound waves. Wow. As opposed to... Yeah, I would have thought that these chloral fluoro carbons. A lot more. <laughs> <laughs> or no, no, EMPs to my brain. We don't use those anymore. I mean, there's still electromagnetic radiation at all times everywhere on Earth. That's light, that's radio waves, that's yeah. Wi Fi. That's mm-hmm. Thank you, Dr. Science. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> but if I mean maybe if that matters to you, I mean maybe yeah. it works. I don't know. 30, I'm going to try them. 20, 30 bucks? You yeah. Can find I would just also be interested to see how they sound, too. Yes. Yeah. And that, that sounds, I mean, it could be really fucking cool. magically great. Yeah, so absolutely. For 20 clams, I'm in. I'll take a change. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. Right on. EMF radiation free air tube. And these, I mean, those are 80. But 80 yeah, I mean, I'm sure there's different levels of it, too. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> cool, cool. Maybe something to check out. Maybe something at the shop. A new yeah, no, right. I would love to. Yeah, man. That's great. Bringing up Rick Rubin. Uh, yeah. Did you read his book or listen to it? Or I have like? not read his book right. yet. I will say I do have it. Okay. It's on my kind of list. Uh, just unfortunately, we have a four-year-old at home. So yeah. and uh, me kind of being a stay-at-home dad nowadays, mm-hmm. she takes up most of my time. Absolutely. Uh, but I've well, got a sure. stack of books that I'm mm-hmm. very excited to read. Uh, mm-hmm. And I was very excited to, to even hear that he was coming out with a book mm-hmm. uh, because he's such a genius. And to get into his mind in any way, that's very fascinating to me. So, yeah. Yeah. I um I'm a big fan of audiobooks read by the author. So him reading his book and hearing it, you know, the inflection where he wants to put it and yeah. just, you know, his impeccable s- sense of timing and spacing and everything. It was uh, oh, yeah. really fucking good, man. Nice. Yeah. And he's done some really good podcasts, you know, Lex Friedman and mm-hmm. Huberman and yeah. I think he did Rogan too or something like that. 
He's a really well spoken dude, and he's Absolutely. really complicated, but like you said, genius. Yeah, you know, he's got that genius level stuff. It's and like still at it too. Still, still so just working hard, music, and man. yeah, it's it's yeah. crazy. And yeah. can pick whatever he wants to do, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Imagine telling that guy no. It's like he tells you to do something. It's like no, I'm gonna do it this way. It's like all right. Like, are you sure? Yeah, I mean it's a conversation <laughs> still. Yeah. You know, and he's done so much. I'm sure he's had some flops too. Oh yeah. But, you know. Oh yeah. Everybody does, right? Yeah, man. All about throwing it out there and seeing what happens. Uh, throw, it, throw it against the wall and see what sticks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, man. Yeah, somebody prolific like that. I mean, it's, uh, I don't know. What do you start with? Uh, you know, back in New York 30 years ago, probably more than 30 years ago. Probably, yeah. You know, a long ass time. Man. 30 years that we've known about it. Exactly. Right? Doing, yeah. Him doing it. Yeah. 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 Right on. So that. good. Uh, radio. Do you listen to any radio shows? Uh, so I do not. Okay. Uh, I will say that uh, Kelsey was uh, recently introduced to eighty nine point one Jazz Station, yes. uh, and we do KMHD. listen to that. So What's that the, is now. What's the letters on that one? KMHD. Oh, that's the one. Yeah, that's a, that's a good one. Look at that. I like the that. one. Yeah. So we're listening to that all the time. Super love that mm-hmm. station. Uh, but otherwise, I was listening to like one hundred seven point five, which is like kind of like oldies hip hop right type on. stuff. Love nineties hip hop, nineties R and B. That's where it's at for me. That just brings back so many great memories of kind of growing up and everything. So nice. Uh, but yeah, eighty nine point one is where we're at. It's really nowadays. good. Yeah, there's a uh, one variety. session I would catch. I don't know if it's Thursday night. It's like a funk thing or something like that. Drop shop. If you you even know? If, I, of course, it's, I know the drop shop? drop shop. The drop shop. I mean, I've been driving. It's like, what the fuck is this track? I do the thing where you hit the button on the phone and it tells you what music's playing. Yeah. You know, that's uh, there's been some fucking ridiculous things that come out of there. Oh, yeah. Well, and that was another thing, too, where that was, you know, we were introduced to that by a customer of ours. That basically was like, hey, have you guys heard 89.1? And we were like, right on. No, I mean, maybe in passing. Like, mm-hmm. no, you got to check this out. And and we did mm-hmm. months ago. And now that's all we <laughs> listen to pretty yeah. much. So. I That's think it's pretty really, exciting. Really, and it's, uh, it's an NPR OPB thing, right? Uh, yeah, it's Mount Hood Community College and OPB. And OPB. Yeah, right. and they'll play like Krongbin on there too, like yeah. we were talking about. Exactly. Like yeah. it's, they, they play a really cool variety of stuff on there. Yeah, the programming, like, you know, you get the, the jazz hour, the R&B, the, the funk, and then some of like the drop box. Would you? The drop shop. Drop shop. Yeah, it's like, okay, I'm listening to this whole fucking hour, whatever it is. It's really good. Yeah, it's incredible. Uh, I want to shout out here to uh, 90.1 KBOO. That's KBOO, community, yeah. KBOO, community radio, because uh, I like they reach out, at least when my buddy Sean was there, he reached out to my band. Uh, back, this is back 2018, 2019, whatever. And was like, bring your band into the studio. We're going to record you. We're going to give you like your tracks. We're going to play you on the radio. Yeah. I and mean, that's such a cool opportunity that like not a lot of people get. So I'm just like big shout out to them for for trying to do that and get yeah. lot, local artists kind of. Yeah, absolutely. They have a show on Sunday nights called The Movement uh, from 10 to midnight and Mob Rule actually the artist uh, one of the artists I'm working with. Uh, I actually went with them last week and we recorded a little interview with them. So that was cool. Nice. And uh, yeah, they do it in their like basement. They just had a bunch of records everywhere. It was it was super cool. Right so, on. I just yeah. pulled out my phone real quick to get this guy's name right. Uh, Christopher McCann. Do you know Chris? No, I don't. He's a local guy. Uh, does accounting for work. Big music head. Like, had nice. an interview at his uh, at his uh, house office um, before. Um, just to talk about accounting stuff, we go in there, just records all over the wall. Love it. I was like, all right, cool. And we started, we probably talked about music more. Love it. Dude is into some music, and every once in a while, I'll just send me a screenshot. He's like, yo, check this track out. And it's like track specific. That's the best. And he'll hit me up every once in a while. But recently, we were, I was like, hey, um, I heard this track on uh, KMHD. And he was like, hey, you ever listen to KBO? I'm like, no. Yeah. And then I pulled it up and I saw the, the program listing, I was like, oh, I'm going to check out this hour. And yeah. great music has come out of it. He hits me with some fucking zingers. I'm like, that is a bananas track. Yeah. Stuff I've never even heard of. Yeah. Like, it's similar yeah. with the the movement show that I was talking about, Sunday mm-hmm. nights from 10 to midnight. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were playing some, man, some great, just like kind of everything, like funk, soul, mm-hmm. hip hop. But it was a really cool, eclectic mix of kind of all of that together. Nice. Um, which I thought was super awesome. And they were just, I mean, they had so many different things to choose from there. And they were actually spinning vinyl too which that's is great cool yeah yeah man yeah it was a 
I mean, I guarantee Chris has probably been in the shop. You might know him if you say him type thing. Well, you know, Kelsey yeah. probably knows him. Yeah, yeah, oh, okay. yeah, yeah that's the only thing. Yeah. Is like mm-hmm. we do have a lot of regulars in the mm-hmm. shop, but people don't know who I am. And then if I mm-hmm. if I am in there, they're like, "Are you Ronald?" And I'm like, <laughs> "No, I'm not Ronald." Right on. Uh, and yeah, it's it's a yeah. fun conversation. Yeah, the um, the community around music mu- around music and sharing music, you know, it's a way of communication. Oh yeah, you know, just like. Or I like hip hop, or I like rock and roll. It's like, well, we could like each other stuff. You bounce it off all these other stuff. Yeah. You know, I'm a professional musician. I could listen to your country album and absolutely give pointers and whatnot. Yeah. Um, one of my good homies I played music with in San Francisco. She's been in the music game for a long time. She's in New York now. Does a bunch of stuff, freelance writing for oh, sweet. Forbes and whatnot. But you know, I've gotten flicks from her and been like. I'm backstage at Radio City Music Hall. She's like, I was like, is that Method Man? Is that Mary J. Blige? <laughs> Fuck, you're doing all right, kiddo. Yeah. You know. Good on um, you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. She uh, knew uh, K-Tran, K-Tranata. Oh, wow. From, like, way back. Yeah. Yeah. And it was like, he doesn't do, do interviews. And uh-huh. she's like, yeah, I'm on Zoom with him now. I'm like... <laughs> Fuck, <laughs> that's fucking cool really? as shit. I didn't even know who that dude was. Like, she worked with him for a long time. I was like, yo, have you heard this? She was like, I've known that guy for 15 years. I'm like, sweet. It's pretty cool to uh I feel like, well, I'm glad I'm on to it now. Yeah. yeah. And that's, like, I find myself getting in a stagnant with music, like, listen to the same thing yeah. over. Like, I appreciate people like Chris, like, hey, check this out. Yeah. Jackie's always somebody I was like, yo, what's, what's good in music right now? And it's like, be ready for it. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Okay, and that's how I came on to Krongbun. Oh yeah, and she was like, "Yo, Laura Leasy, you know the bass player." She's like, "Check this out." I was like, "This is really good." So good. And now they're just bananas. Yeah, another really good instrumental band too is called Budo's Band. If you remember oh, that, I love Budo's. Oh yes, so yeah. Good. yeah. So you know, just uh, you know, leaning into those and and stocking them like crazy mm-hmm. in our store, right? But you know, to your point about the music, like every single week, you know, we go through and we pick kind of what records we're coming. We're getting for that week new releases, right? Mm-hmm. We're looking through a list of 400 to 500 records coming out every <sighs> single week, right? And so taking that and digesting it and breaking it down. And, Good golly. You know, obviously you have your big hitters, right? Your Taylor Swift's coming out. Yeah, obviously. Mm-hmm. But there's so many cool, like, reissues. Not all of that's new music necessarily, mm-hmm. right? It might just be a new pressing of it. But uh, staying ahead of all that, like, there's a lot to look at every week. So you can definitely get overwhelmed very quickly. Yeah. Uh, you know, so that's where it's kind of like, you know, you take that time to purchase an album, you're deciding like, this is a favorite of mine, mm-hmm. right? Like that's kind of how my vinyl collection started out was like, I love all this music, but I just want to own vinyl of like my favorites. Right. Mm-hmm. And so that's kind of the vision that I kind of had for it. And I, and I, as I'm talking to different collectors and stuff, that kind of seems to be the general kind of consensus for it, you know? Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's a lot of fun. I can dig it, man. Yeah. That's a tremendous amount of music to listen to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. That's a lot of work. <laughs> the work behind the work. That's great. Hmm. I'm just thinking of music I listen to. Um, would you now, would you buy a physical media record for one track? Would I? So you're saying just like a 12 inch single? Or no, just you like, only like one of the songs? Yeah, it's like, oh, I like this song. I've heard the whole thing. No. I wouldn't. Right on. To be honest, nice. like to me, like that is a collection of songs that that artist put out. Like, mm-hmm. if you love the art itself, mm-hmm. but if you're just like for one single, I wouldn't. I mean, to me, that is kind of what streaming is for. I guess you could say is like the folks that have kind of like that one song. Mm. But if that's the only song that you like by them, I would definitely suggest checking out more <laughs> before you took the time to buy something, right? Right on. Unless it's like an artist that is already established or something, right? Mm-hmm. Like Krongbin knew I would love their new album. They yeah. came out with a single. Well, hey, like, I've only heard one single from it, but guess mm-hmm. what? I'm going to buy that Krongman album, and I know it's going to be great, right? Excellent. Uh, different things like that, but, you know, I think that, you know, vinyl, if you're buying something on vinyl, it should be something special to you. You know, hmm. I don't think it should be a one-hit wonder. Um, I think you can buy compilations like that, you know, where mm-hmm. you kind of have, like, a variety of different people if you want. But uh, for me personally, you know, I, I would just like to – just go for the favorites, you know, and really, is this something that I actually want to own for a longer period of time, right? Right on. Yeah. From my personal experience, I don't, I don't do vinyl. I appreciate it and everything like that. I don't have the machine or anything like that. But like when I used to buy CDs, yeah, I came on some really great albums like that. Mm-hmm. Um, one I just played recently, 
and I forgot how fucking good of a record it was. New Radicals. Yeah. Oh yeah, that that album's amazing. That album yeah. is so fucking good. Yeah. But I bought it because that one track was on the local radio station and got play. And I listened to the whole fucking thing. I was like, this is a great record. Yeah. Um, and, and then that even got repressed a few years ago. Oh, did it really? Because it has such kind of like a cult following to it. Nice. People like if you actually take the time to listen to more than just that single, mm-hmm. realize that wow, that was an extremely talented musician. Yeah. And that's the only record they put out, right? Yeah. And it was yeah. mainly just one kind of person, and mm-hmm. uh, he had a band with him, but he was mm-hmm. kind of like the whole vision of it. And yeah, genius. I mean, it's super good. But everybody great, just yeah. only knows them as the one song. Yeah. I see the other side of it too, where mm-hmm. you're saying, you know, it's just like records are, they're pretty pricey, right? Mm-hmm. And so that's where I'm like, hey, you know, know that you really want it first. But I also can see the other side of it, like you're saying too, where, hey, now this is one of my favorite bands, mm-hmm. right? And I never knew that they would be until I checked out the whole thing. Right? Yeah. Some other ones that stand out. I'm just going to throw some bands out there. Um, mm, song, Crash Test Dummies. Yeah. Because that go. song was all over the radio. Yeah. That was a great fucking record. It was. <laughs> people, people might think I have horrible taste in music. That's fine. But there was some really fucking good stuff on there, man. It was, yeah. And I don't think any, most people never mm-hmm. even knew they had more than that one song. You yeah. know? And they'll hear it and they'll be like, what is this? You yeah. Know? It's like, well, it was part of a whole thing, you know. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, no, that's that's incredible. Yeah. Um, very unique. I'm a big fan of covers, and I remember buying Type O Negative. Yeah. For whatever their fucking big song was, a Black Number Nine or whatever it was. Yeah. Um, and they did a cover of Cinnamon Girl. Ah, there you go. And I was like, I fucking love that. <laughs> so I bought their next record. Didn't know any of the songs on it. There was a Seals and Croft cover on it. Nice. And it was fucking great. That's cool. I love covers. Um, Tool covering No Quarter. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bananas. It's cool when they cover it and they make it their own. And personalize it. Exactly, yeah. I mean, Typo Negative kind of did that just because the guy's voice is (laughs) five octaves deep, whatever. (laughs) What are your thoughts on on covers besides making your own? Yeah, I love covers. Some people fucking hate it, I know. I love covers. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, to me, when when you take the the song and you kind of strip it down to the bare bones and make your own interpretation of it, that's Mm -hmm. my favorite. Um, But you have bands like, even bigger bands like Weezer, like they released a whole covers album. Super cool. I mean. You play that Weezer record, and hey, guess what? It sounds like Weezer, which most people don't hate Weezer. Mm-hmm. It's a pretty pretty cool sound. It's pretty accessible. And then, hey, guess what? They're singing a bunch of songs that I already know from growing up. Mm-hmm. Like To me, that was a really cool project of theirs where it's like Weezer has, I mean, I'm not going to try to quote how many albums they have, but mm-hmm. there's a ton of albums, yeah. right? And so they're like, let's just do a whole album of covers, right? Like, that's incredible. But, you know, they made them their own, you know, and a lot of people – They'll hear like the Africa song and they'll, they won't even know that there was an original back in the day with Toto. And it's like, oh, it's a Weezer song. And it's like, nice. no, like there's a whole classic that you're totally missing out on. But I think that, you know, you have particular artists like that where they're they're bringing things back that deserve to be heard. Right. Like, hey, if we're still talking about it all these years later, obviously there was something special about that song. Yeah. Right? And to me, that's super impressive when somebody takes the time to make their own version of it. Mm -hmm. You know, to me, that that's really exciting. Now, just a straight cover, that's not that exciting to me, you know, Mm -hmm. because you could just hear the original artist Mm -hmm. do it. Um, But especially if it's like a different genre of music, that's even more impressive, too. Yeah. Yeah, I love that sort of stuff. So I remember being a, a young person, you know, 18, 20 years old and singing a song in the kitchen, my mom started singing it. I was like, how the fuck do you know that track? That's like Jamaican dub reggae dance hall thing I'm singing. And she was like, she went over and fucking pulled out a record. And I was like, oh, fuck, it's a cover. Right. Yeah, it was bananas. Yeah, and there's so many songs nowadays that people don't even know are covers, you yeah. know, or that have a sample in it. You know, a mm-hmm. lot of hip-hop songs, Yeah. Uh, you know, where it's like, oh, yeah, hey, I know that sample. You know, mm-hmm. that's from... Steely Dan's album, you yeah. know, and it's like, did did you know that? You know, mm-hmm. did you know that that's a Michael McDonald song that you're listening to yeah. on there? Like, no, you didn't. But mm-hmm. guess what? You're vibing to it. It's great. Right. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I, I think that's great. I've been uh, I don't want to say guilty of it, but I've, I've done that to people uh, in the shop before. You know, younger people put something on. It was. Um, Kanye. Yeah. And he pulled that sample from. Buck. All my dreams are go. Bum, bum, I can't fucking remember the guy's name now. <laughs> Fuck it. But anyway, 
this guy's music, didn't know a whole lot of it, but boom, Kanye pulled sample from it, and then fucking Eminem had a sample from it. <laughs> yeah. um, I was like, all right, well, put all these tracks on. So I'll play the the one, the original, and then the one from the sample from it, and it'll kind of mix together, and everybody's like, oh my god, and just melt their fucking face. <laughs> That's cool. It's pretty cool, man. Yeah, no, I love yeah. stuff like that, especially if you have an ear for it, and you're listening mm-hmm. to a song, and you're like, wait a minute. Like I can tell that you're that's what you're doing. You're trying to think about it, but you're like, yeah. that reminds me of something, right? Like, mm-hmm. what was it? You know, and and that's exciting. And I remember sometimes like I'll even like Google like lyrics or something because I can't remember the name of it, right? But I'm like, I know this is from something. Yeah. You know, and yeah, to me that's like part of the discovery of it, mm-hmm. right? And then hey, guess what? If you liked it, well, let's go listen to that album. Yes. Right? Like mm-hmm. let's check it out. And there's probably a reason why your favorite rapper was using it for his new album. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And those those DJs that pull those samples, those are real fucking geniuses, man. Yeah. yeah. You know? Absolutely. I love it. Dilla, Doom, <sighs> DJ Premier. I mean, the list goes Dilla's on. Dilla's another one of my books that's in my stack that I'm trying to work to get towards. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, gen- absolutely yeah. genius. We can't keep Dilla on the shelves when, when we're able to get some Dilla in our Good. store. Good. So, yeah. Proper. Love, that's beautiful. I love when artists that I love are also loved by the community. You know, there's mm-hmm. that's something special, you know. Kelsey will mention to me a lot of times she'll be spinning a record, you know, so she's obviously listening to the stuff that she wants to hear and, you know, that's going to have a good time for her. But a lot of times you'll have folks that'll hear it and they'll be like, oh, what are you listening to? You know, and mm-hmm. to me, it's like that connection. You're like, oh, well, actually, I'm listening to this and this is one of my favorite bands and th- this is what they're all about, you know, and so to have that moment with somebody and a lot of times people will turn around and say, Oh, Hey, well, do you have any more copies of that? Like, I want to buy that, you know? And it's like, that's not why we're playing it, but that's super incredible that somebody would have that ability to listen to something and just be like, Oh wow, like I need to hear this, Mm -hmm. you know? And, and it happens quite often. And that's pretty exciting too, to kind of just have people experience something for the first time and kind of be forced to almost just cause you were in that moment at that Mm -hmm. time, you know? Uh, and then, draw a connection with it, you know, and ask questions about it. Well, hey, what is this? You know, exactly. what are they all about? You Opens know? the conversation. That's Absolutely. Yeah. You know, there's an independent band called Guavatron from uh, Florida that we, uh, we've we come in contact with. Uh, Udell, friend of ours, um, mm-hmm. uh, big helper in the store, you know, he loved this band called Guavatron. So, you know, we heard the record. We were like, wow, this is incredible. It's an independent band. But uh, Kelsey contacted them and said, Hey, we want to stock your records in our store. You know, so we contacted the band directly, nice. bought some records from them. Now we have it in our store and we're just like, Hey, you know, this is independent music directly from this band. We believe in it. We love it. Check it out. See what you think, you know? So different things like that, just being able to have that kind of a- ability is amazing, you know, and, and trying to think of all the different things that you can do with that is really exciting. You know, dig it. Charlie, I gotta ask you to bring up this guy's name. It's gonna drive me fucking nuts. It's on the tip of my tongue. I can't remember his name. You can put like Kanye sample. He did Eminem sampled him. It's a French name. It maybe starts with a Y. Hmm. Uh, no, it's off the uh, the one with the fucking. Uh, Kiss it, DJ. Keep scrolling. The one where it's the fucking like uh, mascot character on it with the fucking big head flying through space. What album is that that he fucking did? Oh, oh I know. Yeah, right there. That's the album. Yeah, I wonder. That's the name of the song. Labisa Free. Labisa that. Free. That's his name. Wow. So an Eminem stamp. So the uh, the. Uh, Jay Z sampled him too. That's and amazing. That dude's fucking music. Yeah, is really fucking good. Obviously, the people fucking yeah grabbed enough Joss samples Stone from on there. Yeah, a bunch of Josh Stone. Yeah, that's great. Really cool stuff. Well, yeah, I can't believe you couldn't remember that name though. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, I believe he's still alive. He's got a blog and everything like that. I read some of his posts. He's a super intelligent dude, doing really cool stuff. Yeah, no, that's amazing. Yeah, man. Something to check out. Or not. No, absolutely. I yeah. mean, that's the the general era, to be honest with you. It's like as you know, you get more involved in music. I was born in the eighties, you know, mm-hmm. but as I'm, you know, getting older and everything, man, seventies mm-hmm. were <laughs> where it's, it's really at, man. Stuff, like yeah. obviously I wasn't here during that mm-hmm. time period, but as I'm re listening to it and learning and 
just love everything that came out in that period, you know, yeah. uh, from a classic rock standpoint, funk, soul, everything like that. You know, I, I say I'd go probably about 20 years later. It's about the 90s for like hip hop and R&B for, for me personally. Skipped over the 80s. Uh, but no, 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 no. I won't skip over <laughs> okay. them, But it's just more of like my, I guess, preference overall. Thanks, John. Um, but yeah, no, it's super exciting. Like, even learning things like this, like mm -hmm. I never heard of him before. Uh, that's incredible because I know exactly what sample you're talking about. Yeah. And I, I would love to listen to more of his records. Yeah. You know? Really good. Yeah, man. I'd be so free. I'm going to play that again. That's cool. He's from London? Yeah. I thought he was a French dude. What did I Yeah. Yeah. Cool, man. That's awesome. Charlie, what are your thoughts on covers? I'm going to venture off real quick, but I want to get your thought on Because well, Charlie plays music, too. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think uh, the, the, the kind of music that I, or the kind of bands that I've been in, uh, pull from that Grateful Dead tradition, which I think itself is inspired by, like, a blues and jazz tradition of having what's known as a head chart. And, like, these are the standards. You have a standard book of these are the, the songs you know. It's like in jazz, you 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 have a book. It's called the real book. The real book, yeah. Or the, the original, originally known as a fake book, but it's called the real book. Real fake book. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so it, it is totally up for artistic interpretation. It's like, here are the chords. Here's the, the layout <laughs> of the song. Do whatever you want. I think uh, it, as it's kind of evolved, especially now it, in the jam band tradition, it's kind of more expected that you will kind of toe closer to the line of what the, the Grateful Dead did, you know. And, and that, that differs, that changes. That's a big ask. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's it's like, oh, I really want it to sound like this. And I'm like, well, uh, you know, I want to do it differently. Like, I want, I'm going to play it how I'm going to play it, you know. Yeah. Mm. To, I'm going to interpret it my way. But I think, I mean, it, it is a way of showing love or, or kind of belonging to a tradition or, or um, yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't know. I, 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 I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I, if the, I, I would rather be in a band or I'd rather, you know, the band is like, oh, here's some original stuff, plus supplemented by the covers. Yeah. You know, because it, it's a great way to, to connect with an audience, too. It's like, oh, here's a song right. they might know. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, so let's, let's see who's clapping and dancing for this one. Get like, you singing along. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think if you can be done really well. Garcia Birthday Band around here is an amazing Grateful Dead cover band. Uh, Life During Wartime is a Talking Heads band. Uh, they do a great show. That's a local band, too? Yeah. LDW. Well, LDW? I think they are. But right on. Anyway, they come through quite a lot. Talking Heads cover band. That, and I'm they'll do, by that. They do, like, whole show recreation kind yeah. of thing. Oh, wow. And, like, really cool stuff. So I think, like, that kind of tribute... There's definitely like you connect with the fans on that that level, and but I, I would hope that it would be to like kind of, hey, this is what this is the library I'm pulling from. This is my vocabulary. Is these kind of bands or whatever. Here's my original music. Yeah. Nice. There's bands. There's bands that can do both, uh, and I, I I like those bands. <laughs> yeah, I love. We had a we have an artist that's performing our store many times and she does this amazing no scrubs cover by tlc nice uh but she's a singer songwriter mm -hmm. so she's got like an indie kind of folk vibe to it and she crushes her set original songs amazing you know and then she'll just <coughs> won't even really preface it just be like hey this song's about my ex-boyfriend you know and then bust it out you know and everybody's nice. like yeah because nice. it's got like this laid back feel to mm -hmm. it you know and everybody's just really vibing along to it and to me, that was also pretty special when it's like, I'm not even going to tell you that this is a cover. I'm just going to play it because I know y'all are going to know it, right? Mm -hmm. Like, and I'm going to do it my way, right? So she took like a three minute radio song, made it like five minute version, and it was just super cool. Yeah, nice. Love it. So, you know, but I, I see to your point where it's like, you know, it's good if you can kind of do both things, right? Mm -hmm. Like, if it's like I'm starting out with a cover and then I'm doing a few more covers and then it's like, oh yeah, I do have one original song, by the way. Like, you know, that might be a little bit of a tougher uh, to be able to make that connection with mm -hmm. like an audience, I guess you can say. Right. Yeah. You don't have more of like yourself in it. Exactly. Yeah. Why is it OK for a band to cover a song of another band, but it's not OK for a comedian to cover somebody else's bit or whole act or 
a painter to paint another Mona Lisa or yeah. any other variety of that. Why is why is that acceptable? I don't know. I just thought I guess, of that. I guess right maybe now. only just because of a royalties thing, right? Where it's like, yeah, you're you're say you recorded it, you released it, mm-hmm. you're known. Like there's some one hit wonders that are only known for like doing a cover of another person's song, right? Like Alien Ant Farm, right? Like <laughs> They they got big off their Michael Jackson cover, right? Oh, with that ridiculous bass yeah. guy. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you know, otherwise, you know, they had a few other good songs too. But mm-hmm. you know, it's just kind of interesting, kind of how that all pans out with them. But mm-hmm. um, but yeah, I don't know. I I kind of just reminds me of that Alien Ant Farm song and hmm. kind of as I'm looking at that question, anyways, that, that yeah. just came to mind. But. I mean, yeah, I, I mean, I think it's a royalties thing, right? Because at the end of the day, like, you know, Michael Jackson's estate or whatever mm-hmm. is making the majority of that money off of that song. So I guess they don't care. I don't know. It just seems odd. But to your point, I've never looked at it that way. I just thought of it right now. I know now. there's a lot of things that come out where a comedian is kind of maybe borrowing some material from another one, and it is very controversial. I don't even mean that. Happen. Like, yeah, like joke stealing, that's a real thing. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But like, hey, I really like what you do i'm i'm gonna cover it i'm gonna do it yeah is it gonna be as funny or it's not gonna be the original i might personalize it here and there put my own spin on it but that's a big fucking nay nay yeah you can't get up and do somebody's act yeah but in music yeah go play their song it happens all the time i mean every weekend we have probably at least one cover played by somebody you know Hmm. yeah it is interesting i've never thought about it that way but I'm, I'm I'm a little fucking intrigued by that right now. And I think about it. If I got up and heard a comedian in a, a small show do somebody else's bit, yeah, I'd be like, "Fuck you! You stole that." But yeah. If I, I just said I love covers, and if I heard somebody play something else, I'd be like, "Oh, I like that ta- song." Well, I like that fucking bit you're doing too. But no, you can't do that. <laughs> I got to think about this now. Yeah. What do you think, babe? You're in the music world and the comedy world. Well. um... I mean, the first thing that came to mind, I just was thinking about, or watching a video about this, uh, specifically about comedic movies, which is kind of different, but it's comedy writers. Mm -hmm. And looking at, specifically, Amelia was talking about The Naked Gun compared to Get Smart and uh, the Pink Panther movies. And there's like some, Mm -hmm. there's some bits or some show pieces, some gags that are very similar. And in fact, there's some dialogue that's exactly the same, or not exactly, but very, very close. Mm-hmm. Um, and what they talked about that is like, well, writers move around the studios, and there's been like gags that are copied between comedy movies since there have been comedy movies, essentially. So uh, that's one side of it. I maybe another part of it is that when you've recorded a song on an album, like you said, maybe they've got pay- they got paid, they got their royalties, so. It's not like you're taking anything out of their mouths, whereas if you're copying someone's act, like that they're still using or something, or that I don't know, maybe as, but I would I would have to talk to a comedian and see what they would say. I, I, I'd be that was, that's where I just thought in my head I'd have to talk to a comedian, maybe like somebody of a high level, um, and really fucking that's that's an interesting fucking thing, like like a George Carlin bit or a. A Richard Pryor bit. Yeah, they have estates, but they're fucking dead already. Pay tribute to them. Yeah, if you and, and really and really did it a fucking solid and executed it well. Yeah, you'd be like, hmm, you fucking did somebody else's bit, or like, hey man, that was really cool and you fucking executed well. Yeah, I can tell that you loved it, right? And exactly. You expressed it, and yeah, yeah, that's that's pretty awesome though. That's, a good, that's a good question. Yeah, like a good one. Sounds like you need a comedian on here. We try him. We had a couple of. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Well, we're working on it. Yeah, exactly. I'll send a, a DM to, uh, you know, Bill Burr or something like that. Yeah, he'll he'll get do. right back. <laughs> yeah. Go fuck yourself. Uh, we'll figure it out. Dave Chappelle will yeah. immediately text me Go back when he yourself. sees it's me texting I'll do a whole him. special about it. Exactly. <laughs> 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 Shit, I'll be in the next bit. Look out. Beautiful. <laughs> cool. Uh, put you on the spot a little bit. Yeah. Hot take. Is there any prominent artists that are beloved worldwide that you're like, meh, take it or leave it? So, let's see here. Um, you know, to be honest with you, I'm a pretty big lover of all music, mm. but I will say uh, one that just has never really been for me too much was U2. 
I don't know. For for whatever reason, I just never really connected with U 2s music. Not I such don't know. a big hot take. I would. Charlie, say. I don't know. No, really, really. I would say that's not. People a big love U two. Oh yeah, yeah. I've gotten to a, a fucking uh, an old Mustang with T tops, and it was like, "What do you want to listen to?" <laughs> it was like, "I guess something by U two because it's all we have to listen to." <laughs> oh, hang on a second. Or Iron Maiden. Yeah. Okay. okay. Those are my. I guess we're going Iron Maiden. You know. Great. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. You too. I don't take that as a, I mean, uh, playing a little bit of guitar, uh, who's the guitar guy? Doesn't have a real name. The Edge. See, you know, yeah. but he does have a name, okay? You know, uh, some people say maybe he's not the best guitarist. I don't know. He's on stage doing it in front of millions of people for millions of dollars. Yeah. You know, when it was uh, Jimmy Page, The Edge, Jack White. This could get loud. Great movie. Uh all in a room together. Was there somebody else was there too? I think that was it. Yeah, I think that was it. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck is that guy doing there? Yeah. <laughs> and Jimmy Page is over there fucking playing the theremin and shit. That was a fucking... Um, but yeah, I don't take that as a hot take. No, Please continue. All right, all right. Yeah, let's get spicy. I'm going to... What else? Who else? Uh, you know, Black Eyed Peas, but that's probably not a, a spicy take, but... I just never really cared for their music, so I, was I saw. A... Um, I'm not a big musical fan of theirs. I mean, I probably know some of their music. Um, somebody, I saw a video recently of the head guy, Will I Am. Yeah, talking about something that's new and very popular right now. Doing it way before everybody else. He was like, "Yo, this is that hot shit." Oh yeah, and everybody's like poo pooing it, and now it's like. I forget yeah, who it was. Will I Am's legit. He's you know he's a great producer. He works with a lot of people. I think the biggest thing for me was just Fergie mainly. <laughs> I wasn't a big Fergie fan. Uh, <laughs> if you if you ever seen Fergie's yeah. uh, performance yeah. at the NBA uh, All Star Game, you gotta fill it up now. if you've never seen that, uh, Not. it is incredible. She sang the national anthem at a NBA All Star Game a few years back, and uh, you see the players uh, trying to stay composed um, as she's. Uh, a few years back? Oh, she's a little past her prime, is she not? Oh, boy. <laughs> what in the wild world of sports is going on? That is beautiful. Oh, no, no, he kept it pretty good. Wait till you see some of them. <laughs> they don't even know where to look. That's great. LeBron's just like... <laughs> I think it's Draymond Green's reaction is the best, if I remember correctly. Let's see. I could see Draymond <laughs> acting out. <laughs> oh, it's fucking tough to listen to. <laughs> I'm sorry that I brought this up. No, this is great. <laughs> this is great content. I love this. I need to be exposed to this. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 watch, watch, watch. He breaks. <laughs> oh, yeah. Keep it together, guys. Oh, yeah. Let's play some basketball! Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <sighs> Let's play some basketball. Man, I just realized how hard I was holding my hands there. Charlie's heard that before, right? Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> classic, classic. <laughs> thank you for bringing that to my attention. I mean, but it's that. You're welcome. <laughs> That it's great. that and it's Roseanne, right? Those are the two oh, you yeah. get to hold to hold everything else up. Those are the standard. 
Excellent. Yeah, that's a good one, too. All right, All right so uh, Fergie specifically, uh, you two. What else? I don't, I don't dislike that many artists. I'll okay. be completely honest with you. I'm not even just trying to softball you. I really? really don't. I try to appreciate as much as I possibly can. Appreciate it and like it are two different things. Yeah, exactly. So I'll pitch back. I'll say it. I'm not a big fan of Bob Dylan. There I you appreciate go. what he did for music and everything like that. Gotcha. You know, um, Jimi Hendrix doing you know a Bob Dylan cover. Yeah. I'm probably going to listen to that one. To be honest with you, I'm also not a big fan of Bob Dylan, so huh. I, I can agree with on you on that one for sure. Okay, yeah, I appreciate all the stuff he's done for the music, and everything. Oh yeah, all all the things on that. Um, Charlie, you got a take on Bob Dylan? Uh, yeah, similarly, I, I think his lyrics can, are great and influential, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I think I think what he's done, the, what he did a lot for the for music was that he went to the acid test with the Grateful Dead. <laughs> Took the acid to the Beatles, gave them the acid, and then created music. I mean, that's 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 influential. <laughs> I mean, he was kind of a, he was a guy who was he who was very unique and of his time, and he and he had a lot of influence. But yeah, I don't listen to him on the regular. And to some people, that's heresy. And yeah, I mean, he just released a new album like literally last year. Are so you shitting me? It's wild that he's still yeah pumping out songs too. too. Man. Yeah, absolutely. Hmm. All right, I'm going to give you another one, and this will ruffle some feathers. And I explore it every once in a while, too. The Beatles. Okay. I appreciate all their music and everything like that. Maybe I haven't listened to, you know, the White Album in its entirety enough or something like that. Um, when it came time to playing some music before, it was like, oh, let's play the Beatles. I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> but I didn't, without even saying I don't like it and not liking it i was like i know eight or 12 beatles songs yeah because exactly. it's so ingrained in all of music everybody yeah uh, i didn't i was like oh fuck. first thing i fucking learned how to play is blackbird you know yeah like, um but i'm not gonna seek out and be like i'm gonna listen to the fucking beatles right yeah. have you heard the uh, gray album though yes <laughs> danger mouse so danger mouse made uh the gray album he took beatles white album okay and he mashed it with jay-z's black, black album, album. And he took Jay Z's verses and put it over Beatles music. Super cool, super super cool. I like the sound of that. I was having a very similar conversation with Mob Rule. You would get along with him. Okay. He also is a big Beatles hater, so I'll say that. I was he'll, a he'll hater. Listen, he'll listen to this for yeah. sure. Yeah. Uh, but we were just at a record store together in Portland the other day, and he yeah. bought the Gray album. And I was like, "Look at you buying a Beatles-related bootleg thing." Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think for me, growing up, to be honest. My grandmother was obsessed with the Beatles. They were they came out when she was a teenager, so oh, she had like right in the pocket. all this like memorabilia, and she passed it all on to me. And so I think for me personally, like like you were saying, just ingrained, mm -hmm. like I was just born to be a Beatles fan because like that's just kind of all I knew. But I will say that there's a lot of people that we hear that aren't that into the Beatles. So I don't think that that's too crazy of an idea. But a lot of people will fight you on it. Like when Ryan oh, yeah. brought it up to me, Marble, I didn't. I was like, I see it. I get it. I yeah. can understand that. Um, a lot of people say even just the fact that they weren't around for very long. You know, a lot of people, like, oh, they're the Beatles. They're the greatest. And, like, it's like, well, all of it was in, like, a 10-year span, right? Like, mm -hmm. a lot of people don't understand that. And they'll think, like, oh, well, they were around forever. And and uh, so I think there's also kind of, like, a lack of just education on the Beatles as well just because they are so big that mm -hmm. it's just – no, you just have to like the Beatles because they they're the Beatles, yeah. right? Like that that's kind of like the general consensus of what mm -hmm. you normally get. But can we keep a Beatles record on our shelves? No. Like any Beatles, it doesn't matter what condition it's in, doesn't mm -hmm. matter what Beatles record it is, we bring it in, somebody will snatch it up, you know. But it's the same for Grateful Dead, right? Like there's certain artists that we have that are just kind of like those staples, those classics yeah. where they're always going to be popular. Pink I Floyd. I pizza on the menu. Yeah, yeah Pink yeah, Floyd, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, you know, Pink Floyd's not for everybody, but they're known as kind of <gasps> like one of those, like, classic bands. People right? don't like Pink like, Floyd? So. Some people, but, you Fucking know. Communists. <laughs> not that there's anything wrong with communism. Communists love Pink Floyd. What are you talking about? <laughs> True. At least, right on. At least <laughs> this one. <laughs> <laughs> at least on. this one. Yeah, man. I, uh, yeah. I mean, they're everywhere. It's it's so ubiquitous. Beatles everywhere. I I flipped across something uh, recently on the Instagram. It's like uh, you know how songs came to be, and it was 
Get Back, I believe oh, yeah. it was. Yeah. And how they, how uh, Paul came up with that in three <laughs> minutes or something like that. Yeah. And just like mumbling the words and it came out to be this fucking bananas track. I was like, not my favorite track, not my favorite band. I really respect that. Yeah. And hearing about their whole story about, you know, they were this small band from, you know, Liverpool, but they would go to whatever and just work eight hours a day for years. Yeah. And when they finally got their break, they were so fucking polished and locked in. They could execute and then boom, the fucking Beatles. Yep. I, Absolutely. I like the whole fucking story of it. The music, give or take. Yeah. It, it is also fine. I find it very interesting that the solo careers of each of the artists mm. are not that they're not established or anything, I mean, especially Paul McCartney. He's done so much, mm -hmm. but they don't, you know, like for us in our store, for instance, mm -hmm. solo albums, like people don't really care about those. You know, really? it's like it's all the Beatles albums. Like we'll have John Lennon albums in our store for months, you know, which is mm. interesting. Uh, but it's like if you just slapped Beatles on it, right? Like, <laughs> there you go, right? But it's the same kind of for Pink Floyd, like Roger Waters, like Pink Floyd, right? Did you know Roger Waters is a, a you know, very important piece of that band? Mm -hmm. Well, hey, guess what? You know, he has his own material too, yeah. which is also pretty incredible. But a lot of people don't even know that, right? Because it doesn't have the name on it. So yeah. it's just kind of interesting kind of to look at it that way too. So where it's like, is it just the brand or is it actually – you know, the music, and did you keep listening to it afterwards, or was it just because they were in the Beatles, you know? I don't hmm. know. I think it's kind of an interesting kind of take on it. I mean, George Harrison had some cool music. I was going to say, that if I had to pick one, I was like, George's music, I would yeah. say afterwards. Yeah. All, all Things Must Pass is a perfect album. Oh, so yeah. Cool. Perfect album? Nice. I, I mean... Big one. From a, from a Beatles fan, and it's 1970, and it's all stuff he was pretty much working on in Abbey Road, and he <laughs> yeah. just recorded himself. And... I mean, I don't know if you watch Get Back, the, yeah. but he talks about it. He's like, oh, I'd like to do an album of just songs I wrote with the Beatles. But, you know, and that's essentially what All Things Must Pass is. Yeah. Just, Beautiful. Like, well, that's not going to happen, but <laughs> yeah. there you go. I'm say we're mildly agreement. George is the best Beatle. Yeah. I, I, Ooh, I think quick so. Quick yes. I mean, I... And I'm a Ringo fan because I'm a drummer. I was uh, going to check you on because he gets a lot of hate. Mm, no, he's... I was just watching another thing about him too. This uh, people were asking like, "Oh, what do you think about Ringo?" He's like, "Ringo was the the, the feel of the band. If if you had Pete Best on the drums, he sounded the, the whole band sounded different." Mm -hmm. And then there was because there's it's "Love Me Do" right where there's a recording with Pete Best on the drums. It sounds okay. Mm -hmm. There's a recording with Ringo on the drums. It sounds awesome. It's like that that kind of it's the style. Is that style it's that we know? Style. And then the, they did a third one where they had a session drummer and just put Ringo on the tambourine. Well, then the tambourine part sounds amazing and the drum part sounds, you know, wow. fine. Where he's got that feel. And, and like you were saying, when they were in Germany and just working in the clubs for days and days and days, mm -hmm. and he, I mean, he really could nail that. The reason they liked him is because he could nail down that, um, that uh, the, the Ray Charles kind of mambo, oh uh, yeah, yeah, swing thing. And yeah. there's no other drummer could do that at that time, really. Besides, I mean, yeah, that they had, you know, Pete I couldn't mean, do it. He was great at what they asked him to do, or, yeah. right, or what he needed to do exactly. to make those songs sound good. But is he the best drummer ever? No, but. Does that matter? Yeah, I, I'm right, not the right. best drummer ever. That's why I, I'm like, okay, he can do it. Like, whatever. I, <laughs> he can do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ringo Starr. Oh, he can do it. Look at him. That's He's left-handed. I mean, <laughs> way to go. Beautiful, man. Role player. You know, it gets you two points, 15 repounds, an assist here or there, fills a role. The Draymond Green. That's Draymond it. Green. Yeah, that's there you go. All Beautiful. I aspire to. <laughs> I love it. All right. I like this, this track real quick. Um, Led Zeppelin. Yes. Not a huge, not a huge Led Zeppelin fan. Right on. Not gonna lie, not a huge fan. Don't despise them or say that I don't like them or anything mm -hmm. like that. But yeah, I mean, it's not my favorite. Right on. I mean, ripped a lot of music too and fucking made it their own cover yeah. style. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, legendary. Like mm -hmm. all props to them. You know, same thing. Another essential. Any Led Zeppelin we get in, I mean, mm -hmm. people want it, right? Like. And that's great. I love that people are still discovering music from the 70s, right? From the 60s. That's that's great. But they're not my favorite. Did I grow up listening to them? Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. But I probably would feel like I know more about the Beatles or feel closer to the Beatles just because of how I grew up, I guess you can say. Right on. Yeah. Who's, uh, who's the best player in Led Zeppelin? <sighs> that is a That's a tough one. I think it's a little yeah, harder think, than yeah. the Beatles. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Paige, but I don't, I don't know. 
I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Charlie on this one. What's oh. what's Charlie got? Bonzo. Come on. It's Bonzo. Yeah. It's Bonzo. I mean, I love Jimmy Page, but it's Bonzo. Come on. Yeah. Come okay. on. All right. Team John Paul Jones. Oh. Wow. All right. All right. Unbelievable fucking musician, dude. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think huge that's... session career before that. He was a guy I think that brought that whole fucking thing together, man. Yeah. Bonzo, great. Fucking Robert Plant can burn it down. Yeah. Love, it, love his solo stuff. Awesome as well. Jimmy Page, you know, that's probably how I learned how to play fucking guitar by listening to, you know, a whole lot of love and shit like that. Yeah. In, in coming into knowing music, and I was like, oh, John Paul Jones. Yeah. I like that we all said something different. That's yeah, cool. that's great. Yeah, that's great. Cool, cool. Pink Floyd. <laughs> Man. We could throw Sid in there, too, as well. Yeah. Because, you know, Pete Best came up as yeah. well. Yeah. I'll go with David Gilmore, I think. I think. Yeah. I'm... I'm. I'm just gonna say drummers. I mean, Nick. Yeah, you could do that. I'm cool with that. Yeah. Nick. Nick Mason is. Um, he does. I mean, he's. He f- serves the music, and that's. And that's why I like Bonzo. That's why I like Ringo. Like, th- they're not the same bands without these drummers. And and. That's a great point. Nick. Uh, I mean, he said. I, I watched an interview with him and Stuart Copeland, and they're both talking about their favorite drummers and like Mitch Mitchell, which like. If he's nice. he's really who I draw from. I, I love Mitch Mitchell's sound because he's more of a jazz guy. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I think. Right on. I, th- these are these bands is like. <laughs> yeah, it's, I can't. It's you can't switch stop. somebody yeah. out. Like I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's like hot takes. I like to see. They're all essential, yeah. right? They're all essential. Yeah. I love David Gilmore, his whole style and everything like that. Yeah. Um, I loved his solo work too. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, that was an album on an island or something. Yeah, like that? yeah, yeah. Yep. Fanatics. That's a great album. Great record. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think I'm a bit skewed too because I saw Pink Floyd all together. Yeah. Uh, Giant Stadium, you know, 1994 or something like that. Incredible. Pulse. Yeah. Was it? Yeah. Wow. I saw that. Yeah. Um, and then in Philly, 2010 or something like that, Roger Waters. Yeah. With the whole fucking the wall thing and political fucking bananas like a a pink floyd show with did Roger he have the Waters. pig too and everything it was stuff every fucking way yeah it was bananas dude um and then i guess david did some shows with them in england or something like that but uh on top of the fucking wall uh ripping fucking guitar solo he, he pulled off Guy used to do the Saturday Night Live band. Ugly as fucking Sim, played a Telecaster, led oh, the band. Yeah, I know. Exactly. Saturday Night Live and the G.E. Smith band. G.E. Smith. Yep. He, he was he was a guitar. And I was like, who the fuck is that <laughs> killing it? <laughs> G.E. Smith. It was, uh, that show was fucking bonkers. Yeah. So I really love David Gilmore, always have. I mean, seeing that Rogers Water, Roger Waters show, it was like, mm, maybe he had a whole lot more to do with everything else. I, I saw a yeah. few Roger Waters shows, too. I saw uh, perform at Coachella. I think it was like 2008 or something mm-hmm. like that. Crazy. The pig, like, got lost somewhere in the desert. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> they had to, like, find it uh, afterwards, which is pretty hilarious. Uh, and then... Saw him again at the San Francisco Giants Stadium. Oh, nice. Uh, I don't know, 10 years ago or something mm-hmm. like that. But that was the wall live, which was pretty cool nice. to see. But I was like, like to your point, binocular. I mean, I was so high up in the, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. it, But it was an amazing show. Like, absolutely. But, yeah, incredible. Yeah, man. I remember seeing an old clip of, you know, old Roger Waters, probably 70s or something like that. You know, cigarette, and he's got this fucking apparatus in front of him that they're making music with and he's turning knobs and dials and everything like everybody fucking says they can fucking do it well fucking come do it Devin we're fucking doing it you know? like you see you fucking do it it's so fucking easy come fucking do it you know and he's fucking burning the whole place down it's like no this is fucking hard work and it's like man he's got a lot of buttons and knobs and it's making great music so yeah go do it yeah he knows how to use it that's Devin. for sure absolutely cool, cool. yeah um, last one and I'm gonna do this one just cause Charlie's here Grateful Dead <laughs> Grateful Dead, uh, super respect Grateful Dead. Um, obviously, Jerry Garcia also had solo career too. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dead and Company, that was cool. John Mayer, you know, lifetime fan, helping them out. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I, I didn't, I never listened to them a lot, to be honest with you, uh, growing up or anything. Uh, 
but I mean, I, I do like them. I you think know? that they're super talented. Mm-hmm. I think they're great, but um, just wasn't something that was played in my house, I guess mm-hmm. you could say. So, um, but their music is not as poppy as the Beatles, right? So, like, I understand Ooh. why, you know, my grandma was listening to the Beatles, right? Yeah. Um, but you know, I think that the Grateful Dead, especially like with like their cult following and just like their fan, like they're such like a special like bond and, and, you know, the fans of Grateful Dead, like take care of each other. They'll go anywhere in the world to see any sort of a Grateful Dead event. You know, uh, if you ever seen anything about Bill Walton and his super fandom is super exciting. Um, but to know that there's a band that can make like that special of an influence on, people and then to keep it going even after kind of the leader passes away i mean mm-hmm. i think that that's super impressive for a long fucking you know? time too yeah. yeah very very long time so super respect them um their records are very hard to find you know we mm-hmm. do not come across them very often uh there are some new pressings that come about every once in a while which is super awesome but mm-hmm. um definitely if you have a grateful dead records hold on to those for sure but uh, <laughs> nice. But yeah, every once in a while we'll get one in. But um, but yeah, I mean, I think that their music is awesome. Um, it just was never anything that we listened to too much growing up. Well, yeah. My experience with them, I never really knew anything about them. You know, I knew who they were and heard some stuff on the radio here and there. But when I went to college, um, two guys that, you know, had acoustic guitars as well. It's like, oh, let's play. I was like, what do you play? Oh, Grateful Dead. And I was like, I don't know any of their songs or anything like that. Yeah. I was like, cool, you got to hear... 1975 giant stadium you know i was like okay yeah you know and that's all they wanted to play so i was like all right i'll play with it and i remember distinctly you know my limited skills on guitar just i'm like oh i'm just gonna mimic what jerry's doing on lead guitar and i was like i have no fucking idea where those (laughs) notes are going or coming from or where they were or where they're gonna be Right. I, I couldn't pick out anything. It took me a real hard study to even come close to anything he was doing. And then he paid, played, um, you know, like that all steel guitar that had a fucking really distinct oh, yeah, tone. Yeah, it was yeah, like yeah. a thousand pounds or something like that. It was like, that thing was crazy. There's some real musical shit going on here. Yeah. And then, not that I ever did this, but I had heard, allegedly, if you uh, ingest <laughs> certain substances, the music takes on a whole fucking different thing. <laughs> I mean, these people were into that, yeah. so he was like, oh, I could see why you like it, perhaps. Yeah. Yeah, I played my share of Grateful Dead, too, and I came to a certain appreciation on it. And, you know, much like Dylan, it's like, oh, I'm not a big fan of it, but yeah. he's a great storyteller. Yeah. And it's like, you know, so-and-so wrote this song sitting on a box of wine wherever it was in France. That's Ripple. Yep. Right? I was like, that's a cool fucking story. Yeah. I like that. Absolutely. I love it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, great, great storytellers. And that's what a lot of musicians are. I mean, great yeah. storytellers. Absolutely. And that's why we're still talking about them, mm-hmm. right? That's why it's all these years later and we still love them, right? Yeah. Like, that's what it's all about. Yeah. Right on. Uh, well, I want to say hot take, but I guess we could talk about this forever. Charlie's a drummer, so he's always going to pick drummers and everything like that. What instrument do you play or have a focus on? Uh, yeah, so when I was in uh, the main band I was in, I played bass and did some backup vocals um, in it. And then I also played uh, synthesizer, another band, um, done vocals and some solo projects type stuff. But mainly bass guitar that I've played in bands, actually, and then uh, like synthesizers, things of that variety. Right on. And some vocals. Top three, five bass players? Whew, man, that is a very loaded, loaded uh, question there. But um, I always find it tough. So like the best of, because, you know, you name someone, it's like, oh, and then this one and this one. And yeah. This one. Yeah. I mean, Shock honestly, moment. like if you take it back to like the funk, like yes, Lucy, Lucy Collins, right? Oh, like fucking number one, my oh, man. Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. Right like here, We could stop. Now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and then basically he influenced everybody else. So, you know, that was... Uh, kind of how it all uh, came about. And I'll throw another one out there, Les Claypool. Yes. Um, Classic. You know, learning of uh, Les Claypool as uh, I was in high school at the time and trying to learn Here Come the Bastards on uh, bass was very challenging. Uh, And then I found out that he plays a fretless bass on top of it. And Mm -hmm. I was just like, what What is going on here? I don't even know what's going on. Um, So, you know, when you have those bass players that really stand out, you know, and make a name for themselves, I think that that's, Really, you know, uh, nowadays you got like a Thundercat, right? Like doing thing. Like, there's some seriously talented bass players out there. Um, but yeah, I think Bootsy Collins is definitely always will be number one uh, yeah. for me for sure. Yeah, I love that answer. Agree and all that stuff. Les Claypool too, man. Um, what was that stuff he did with um, Rush guy, Kenny Lee? Would they have a band together? Yeah. 
Yeah, frog, they frog did, brigade. They did. Frog brigade is that them? Yeah, and then there was also he did the other project with like Sean Lennon too. Oh, right on. He has a newer project. Uh, Lennon Claypool Delirium. Yeah, Lennon Claypool Delirium. Right. That's kind of like his newer kind of mm -hmm. collab. But I love that he does those kind of like collaborative efforts because mm -hmm. like obviously everybody respects him so much as a bass player and everything. Mm -hmm. But it's cool that he goes with like like I know he did some stuff with like Buckethead before too where it's oh, like yeah, right? it's cool to take like another you know artist that's known for kind of being very very good at one thing and then combine them together you know I think mm -hmm. that's super cool so. don't, don't forget Oysterhead it's uh, Claypool and Trey Anastasio and uh, Stuart Copeland yeah yeah no big deal bangers no big deal you got me on that one <laughs> uh, so that's Fish uh, the Police yeah and yeah. Les Claypool? Yeah. Oh, I'm intrigued. It's really good. Yeah. Nice. It's it's weird. It's but it's so good. Yeah. So Les Claypool's music, you know, he's a fucking musical genius. It's almost to that point like uh it's hard to listen to sometimes for me. I gotta be in oh, the yeah. right fucking headspace. Totally. It's like Love Supreme. It's like if I'm not in the right fucking headspace, it's gonna be like, ah, it's mm -hmm. fucking abrasive. Yeah. It's, it hurts my brain. But if I'm locked in, I'm like, that is yeah. rah, so good. Absolutely. And especially like a live performance like of Les Claypool is so captivating, mm -hmm. you know, because he just, I mean, man, just dancing mm -hmm. up and down like everywhere, right? And mm -hmm. so you're just cap, you're just staring at his hands the whole time, just like, wow, how yeah. is this person doing this? How is this even possible, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but that's, that's what I, I love uh, looking about him. And what's cool about him is like the lyrics and like the vocals are secondary. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Which it's not like that with a lot of artists, if you think about it. Right, like, are the, are the lyrics important in Les Claypool or Primus songs? No, I couldn't tell you anything. They're singing it about a bunch of <laughs> wild things, right? My name is Mud. Right? <laughs> yeah, my name is Mud. Right? Like, mm. but it's he's the focus is on the bass playing, mm. which is super. I mean, you don't really see that very often, you know. And it's a kind of a different way of looking at music, where it's like the vocals and the lyrics are secondary, whereas most most everything nowadays is it's always the vocals and lyrics are kind of shoot, you know, out in the front at you. And so it's kind of a refreshing take when he's doing these collaborative projects, but it's like, it's just all about the music. They'll still give you the vocals and you'll yeah. be bobbing along and everything, but it's really just Matt's master craftsmen doing their thing. You know? Nice. That's cool. That, you know, the cats you mentioned, you know, you say Les gets up there and he's fucking dancing all over. But the first one you mentioned, Bootsy, I just saw an Instagram clip of him recently. And he's like, one to one. Don't. <laughs> Boom. He's playing one fucking note. And he's like, in between you find ba doo ba doo boom. Boom. Right. And it's like, it's fucking perfect and immaculate. Right. Or there's cats, there's stunner cat, and do it the most. And he fucking screams on that thing. Yep. <laughs> but yeah, Bootsy Collins, I agree. Yeah, man. Nice. Cool. Man, I, it's, I came across new music. There's stuff I'm thinking about now that you got on Let's Claypool and listen to Rush because of the Getty Lee. Rush is a fucking other bananas band. We'd even mention the fucking Neil Pert, Alex Lifeson, fucking yeah. Screamer on that that musician, that musical fucking group. Oh yeah. Well, I guess we could talk about this fucking They're perfect. This music. That's perfect. Cool. Right on, man. <laughs> cool. This was great, dude. Yeah, a lot of stuff to come away with, and some new music to listen to. I'm gonna check out the Gray album. I got a new CD, CD to listen to. Yeah. What was that one you just mentioned with the supergroup style? Oysterhead. Oysterhead. Yeah. Cool. John, this was great, man. Yeah. Uh, tell everybody, so you got shows every Saturday right now and yep. first Friday. Absolutely. Right? So yeah, every Saturday uh, we have a page shows at Ronald. We're basically, we're just showcasing artists. So if you're interested in performing, mm -hmm. uh, you can DM us on there, or you can also go on our website, ronaldrecords.club, and kind of fill out like a performance um, application there. Mm -hmm. uh, we are working diligently to work through as many uh, yes. people as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll be honest with you, we are, have been very overwhelmed by the amount of people that want to perform. Excellent. But to me, that is the greatest problem yeah. to have, to be honest with you. We will get to all of you eventually, I promise. Mm -hmm. um, and hopefully we start opening up some more time slots, you know, to just get more folks on shows or maybe even adding more people to the bills. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, it's just kind of go with the flow, right? Like yeah, didn't know exactly how it was going to lead. So let's just kind of adapt from there and make it happen. So word. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you all so much for having Glad me. Glad to have show. you as a neighbor, man. This yeah. Is good. It's great um, to get to know you better. Yeah. That was a great conversation. I mean, it's really cool to, to 
talk about music too and yeah. see where everybody falls. I dig it, man. <laughs> I love it. I love Cheers. It. Yeah. Cool, man. Thanks so awesome. much. Awesome. What you see, what you see is what you get.